Scheme America? God damn it. Sorry to interrupt the show, everyone, but Kim Jong-il is an international criminal. We're here to arrest him. Team, there's no time. You have to convince that audience to let you do your job. <laughs> Gary, you've got to take the stage. No, I can't upstage Alec Baldwin. He's the best actor in the world. You have to try. I'm not that good. Actually, you're the finest actor I've ever met. Beautiful upstate New York, this is the Slam Tilt Podcast, a show about all things pinball. I'm Ron Hallett, here with my co-host, Bruce Nightingale. Kill me. Kill me now. Yes. And welcome to episode 20, uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Khan! Yes, Khan. Yes, the British Khan. Yes, the British Sherlock Khan. We have a guest this week. Yes, we do. It's, this is the one we've been plugging this is for the a while. One. This is the moment. A fans, uh, this is the moment pinheads around the world have been waiting for. Gary Let's Stern. Get re- yeah, Gary Stern. <laughs> 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 Gary, that's what I kept saying, too. But This week, we have noted pinhead and master thespian, Chris Bucci. Well, hello. Hello, hello. Hey, I have a question. Uh, kill me, kill me now. Are we allowed to? I didn't realize that was an option. That'd be oh, a long course. distance kill. Could I shock you through <laughs> your headset? The shocker. <laughs> oh God. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. This is awesome. I'm, I'm no. really looking forward to talking and hanging out here tonight. We we are happy to have you on. Is is probably one of the first pinheads I can think of to make pinball videos. If yes. you will, <laughs> uh, that a lot of a lot of people do now, but probably one of the first I can remember to ever do that. So let's just get you uh, our, our audience acquainted with you. If you want to do maybe a little mini bio of your uh, pin addiction? I'm sure. Well, I started playing pinball when I was tall enough to reach the flipper buttons, probably standing on a milk crate or something like that. But uh, it was really in the mid '80s, you know, with games like High Speed. Um, where I really started to pay attention to pinball. And from that moment on, I was playing pinball about as much as I was playing arcade games, which is huge because, you know, the arcade was my second home for a long, long time. And if you have watched my videos, you know, I mentioned like putt-putt golf and games and some of those places that I frequented all the time because that's, that's I used to live there. You know, that's all I did, like in the 80s and, and early 90s. Um, and then in 1993, I picked up my first game. and. uh I don't know. Do you consider a collector somebody who has more than one of something or somebody who has one of something? Because, you know, I didn't get my second game for three years. So I don't know if you consider me a collector in 96 or in 93. <laughs> uh, a a um, uh, avid pinhead. Uh, we'll go 94 and a half. 94 and a half. Okay. <laughs> that works. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Uh and then, you know, then I was playing on location and collecting, and I kind of slowly built up a collection over the years, and it just started to, well, I don't need that couch anymore. Uh, I don't need that TV there anymore. Uh, I don't need that. And that just kind of grew, and that's generally what happens, it seems. And uh, I've kind of, uh, with the prices and stuff lately and the way the hobby has gone, I, I really don't uh, I don't take part in it as much in terms of the, you know, the, the collecting. You Generally, if I get anything, it's a swap or a trade. Um, but I'm still, still active in it here and there. It kind of ebbs and flows, you know, depending on where I'm at in my life for that particular year. So pinball gets you through anything. Oh, it it does. That's what they say. Okay. I keep on, I keep on telling myself that. I don't know if it works all the time. (laughs) Okay. I'm telling myself, (laughs) but the other thing, uh, our audience may or may not know about you. You are also a actor. Well, so-called, yes. So-called, oh, come on. He's, he's being <laughs> modest now. For, for those who don't know, I and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I remember seeing this. You were in a national spot, like a, I think it was Doritos commercial? Uh, yes, yep. Yeah, when I was, I lived in uh, Manhattan for about three and a half years, and I moved there after ex-fiance number two, and I didn't work out. And uh, I thought, well, now's the time to go. So I, I went there mostly for theater. 
uh, because my background and, and training and stuff is in theater. But, uh, you know, while I was there, I tried to do as much as I could. And I did end up in a, a, uh, a couple of commercials in the Doritos one. Yeah. That was one that ended up, it was a national commercial that they only showed locally in New York city for some reason for a long time. And then it started to spread out a little bit as it went on, but that was one of the things Yeah, that was cool. That was fun. Funny thing actually is yesterday on my looking back in Facebook was the video. So oh, no actually, kidding. It is actually, a, a, I'll have to post it again. I have to, well, I don't know if I can find it again, but it was on my thing. I'll have to look right now. But yeah, it was definitely, I saw it. I was oh, like, ah, yeah. that's Chris. That's Chris oh, I would, I would, commercial. I would love to know if they still have that video up because I never was able to get a copy of it. Let's well, see. <laughs> I'm going to go look right now while That's we're doing uh, this. Yeah. You mean it's yeah. not on YouTube somewhere? It's probably on YouTube somewhere. Everything's on YouTube. Commercials from the 80s are on YouTube. <laughs> Every, everything's on YouTube. So. And so are my pinball videos, Spider1A, YouTube.com. Um, yes, let's plug that right now since uh, <laughs> I don't, your channel. Um, I have a YouTube channel at the. It's Spida one a S P I D a the number one a, um, and you know, it's funny. You should mention about uh, people doing pinball videos now. And there weren't at the time, um, when I started doing them, uh, really with the unboxing of my family guy and my big bang bar that came the same year in uh, 2007, you know, at, at that point in 07, man, there was very little pinball content on YouTube at all. And there definitely wasn't any unboxing stuff, you know, so I, cause I used to get a lot of people that could not believe that the games actually came in a cardboard box, uh, you know, um, but I just, uh, I, I always liked to do, you know, my, my career is in, um, video production, television production. Um, and that's what I did until I moved to New York city. And now that I'm not in New York anymore, that's what I'm doing again. And I think I always just like that, like to create stuff, like to do things. And so when this YouTube thing came around and it was like, Hey, there's a place to share stuff. I just felt, you know, I'd love to do some stuff on, on hobbies that I'm into and pinball considering it did not have a very, uh, very big, um, footprint on YouTube at that point, I thought was a natural thing. And so I just kind of went through and, you know, did some of those videos there. So that's kind of what got my channel started long, long time ago. And, and just to let our, our viewers know, these aren't like just, your your typical when you think unboxing videos, most of the ones you see out there is just like one dude with a camera and another dude opening up the game, usually, you know, and then they'll, then they'll just edit it down to like, okay, here it is unboxed. Okay, here they are putting it together. Okay, here they are playing it. And these videos were not like that at all. These were fully, I'd say, produced, almost almost scripted. Some of them, I would I, I would say at least some of it was, there were lines being read, and editing and and they're much more much fancier videos than what you would see yeah and that's again that's just my i can't that's that's one of those i can't help it things you know like it i can't uh i have a hard time just putting out a video with just me talking to the camera because it's just i just i like to get a little bit more creative with it but at the same time and you guys know how it is when you're doing stuff you could work on stuff for the rest of your life and always find something to change you have to get to a point where it's like, okay, it's done. Let's move on. So yeah, you set a little timetable for them all and then you move on. Like the, the, uh, the, my pinball collection series, which most people are familiar with that are into pinball that, um, that I did early on, that was me standing there, Bob Barker style, just talking into a microphone. And then I would shoot some, some B roll. And then I was putting these videos together. Cause honestly I was packing those games up when I was moving to New York and I didn't know, you never know what could happen. You know, so I thought I want to document these games and that's kind of what I did. And I did not, I didn't expect people to really like the story element of it all. Cause I can't stand listening to my voice for five seconds, but people really <laughs> seem to like the, uh, the stories behind all the games and, and when I started playing them and when I got them, and I guess that's the relatable part of it, but that's kind of how I am as a person. I'm very, very, uh, rom I romanticize everything. You know, I've got to talk about stuff all the time and, um, so that's the part of it that I really enjoyed. And, and I think adding some, some production value was very important to me just to make it uh, less boring and, 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 you know, distract from my Mel Brooks versus Penn Jillette, uh, voice or whatever you want to call Mel it. Brooks versus Penn <laughs> I've gotten, I've gotten the, I've gotten that many, many times. <laughs> well, these were very influential videos in, in more ways than one. I, I believe 
you, you actually got a uh, thank you from uh, Jersey Jack, well, now of Jersey Jack Pinball. But at the time, Jersey Jack was, I believe, the, the largest or one of the largest Stern distributors. Yeah, that's where I got uh, Jack. I, I think I picked up at least, I've had about uh, not as many as some, obviously, but I think of the seven or so new in box games that I got, I got over half of them from Jack. And Family Guy, I picked up from him, and that was the first uh, produced video that I created, um, kind of showing off the features and stuff like that. And uh, he he told me at the time that he sold, uh, I don't know how many of the games because people saw my video, and he actually sent me a um, he sent me a Terminator Three Translight signed by Steve Ritchie as a thank you, which is still on my game actually. Um, nice. Which is which is cool to me at the time because I didn't have any autographs. You know what I mean? You know, now I have some here and there, but at the time that was like, well, you know, and it was nice to know that, that somebody uh, was actually watching and then getting something from it. And I, you know, and and this is the cool part too. I go to the York pinball show every year. It's kind of like the one that I've been going to since 2002. And um, there's always somebody that comes up to me even today and says that they watch the videos and, and those videos, you know, they're standard definition there. That's back when YouTube barely had the 360 p setting you know so they're not even like you know the quality is is not quite what it could be now i'd I'd love to redo them you know maybe do a my pinball collection hd or something but it's it's just nice to have people um i had a young young kid come up to me um and say that he watched my videos and it helped him find games that he didn't know about and that blows my mind because you know we've been in this for so long we've been playing games forever we know all these doggone games and yet this kid had no idea what funhouse was and he thought it was the coolest thing. So he sought it out. And I don't know. That's just, it's neat to hear that. I'm very humbled by that because I just did them for fun and, you know, for friends. And uh, it's nice to know. What's Funhouse? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's Funhouse? Do you still have the family guy? I do. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. All right. That was one I hung on to. All right. <laughs> giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> oh, Brian, very good. No, no, I'm not going to do that. But um, yeah, that was good. <laughs> I know he did really good. Uh, Dude. Hi there. <laughs> Hi there, Mr. Bucci. It's time to score. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I would do, I, I, I remember one of the videos I felt like honored because I, I'm not sure if it was the T3 video or it might have been one where you could see T3 in the background and my initials come up during the uh, while you're talking. Oh, like, yes. oh, look, there's my initials. I famous. Oh, yes. Uh, I think that was well, T3. Well, Ron doesn't know. I don't know if he's seen your new video that you've actually just posted a couple weeks ago, but he does prop us both out in this video, Mr. Ron. Yes, I do. That was the Star Trek mod, right? No, no, the one before that. That was your introduction to Star Trek. Oh, the uh, the unboxing one. Yes, yes, yes. So tell everyone about your new videos, please, and then we'll go back to some of the old ones. Well, and- s- sadly, I don't, you know, that's the thing. Again, I would love, I have another part of my channel. It's called Turbo Views. And it's a, um, again, <laughs> when I was trying to find uh, a niche of things to do on YouTube, and, and at that point, retro gaming was starting to grow with the angry video game nerd and stuff like that. Um, but again, nobody was doing reviews on the TurboGrafx-16, which was a system I had as a kid, and I had a pretty substantial collection of, and I thought, you know what? I want to do some of these. Um, so I, I didn't seek it out necessarily to find niches. I just happened to have niche things in my collections and I, I i set out to review every single american game and i'm about over two-thirds of the way there's 138 of them um and i have i'm almost at number 100 almost wow. but it's man just finding the time um because of the theater I, I i moved from new york city but i still do a lot of theater here where i live and it's nice to be able to keep doing it but it's a it's a big time commitment, you know. I also work full time, um, you know, and other personal things. So it's man, I I would love to do a lot more videos. Um, but I have one that is done. Um, I just have to get it uploaded, and it's my Ghostbusters Premium pickup slash setup slash ramble on video. Um, I got to get that uploaded. That one I just got. So what do you, what do you, are you, are you liking Ghostbusters? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. In fact, I was just at Stern uh, for the first time at Stern Pinball, and I sat down with John Trudeau, 
and I filmed, uh, I took my camera and he was nice enough to sit and talk with me and he, we filmed like a 40 minute interview with him on the making of the game. And I'm, that's the next video I'm going to put together. Um, it was really interesting. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. Um, the game before that, that I picked up, uh, new in box transformers was, uh, well, star Trek was not new in box. it was close to new in box. The, the transformers one was, was a QC nightmare for me. Um, and no, I did a, I did no, a, stop. Well, well, you saw, if you watch the video, remember I did that like one hour long four part thing on transformers. Cause I was so excited about it. Cause I also collect transformers as one of my hobbies, but, it, and I actually didn't mention a lot of the problems I had with that game. Now Stern was awesome in getting them all fixed and, you know, and ended up working out, but I was very disheartened after having so many problems with that game. Um, and again, I'm not bad mouthing, you know, I like Stern a lot. It's just, just me talking uh, because before that I never had one problem, nothing like from, from family guy all the way back to monopoly. I had, n I mean, little adjustments here and there you always have to make. I mean, people just, not like a know. door, not like a, not like the shooter rod being bent out of the box for <laughs> him or, uh, um, <laughs> bum, bum, ba, bum, uh, um, uh, yeah, or uh, yeah. <laughs> or like Game of Thrones premium that won't loop at all, but they say it's you know going to be fixed, and it's still now not fixed after how many months? Uh, but uh, I, yeah. I I I digress. Well, they just made they made a code update, I believe, so it doesn't expect it to loop anymore or something like that. Exactly. That's yeah. that's ridiculous. Well, yeah. I guess I uh, I was happy. Let's just say. That my Ghostbusters premium, I mean, I had to bend the one switch a little bit on the ramp, um, and Slimer was dragging his butt, so I had to raise him up a tad. That's it. Like, minor little things, and I've played hundreds of games on it since. So I'm very, very happy with it so far. Okay. Very good. And now we have, now let's go to the other side. Ron, how is your premium doing? Uh, well, uh, functional-wise, it's fine. No, 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 no. I only no. had to make one slight adjustment, which the uh, the Newton balls on the left they were getting stuck on the the like the rail, the the wire form there. I just had to bend it over a bit, which of course I had to take the plastic off, which has the building on it and all that other stuff. And I did do there is I'll mention there is a stern bulletin. Yes, 188. Yeah, for the on the left side, the flasher that sits above the um, what would you call that? It's it's where you get the extra ball, that 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 eject. Mm -hmm. There is um, it's it sits very close to the metal the metal part where it could possibly short the flasher. And I guess the newer uh, Ghostbusters are actually coming with mylar over the sw the uh, the flasher underneath. So we huh. can't do that, but um, they're advising you do that if, if yours doesn't have it. So I, I did do that. Oh, that's good. I will look that up for sure. Cause I still, uh, I guess there's a, did you get the ecto goggles protector thing I just heard about? No, I didn't get, I, I heard it was a protector and then I heard it was just like, not necessarily a protector, but more like just changes the angle so it looks better. I, 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 oh. I, 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 yeah, it's, it's, that's another thing about pin side. I mean, you hear one thing and it looks like, oh, it's a protector. Then there was another thing like, no, it's, it's just, it changes the angle or something. I, I, oh, cause it looked, it looked like it was a wall that yeah. you connected side of it. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it is. Well, I know a they were going to, I know, I know Trent was going to, cause I got my game from Trent out in, uh, and, uh, tilt amusements. And I know he told me he was going to send it to me. So, uh, I guess I'll see. Now I still haven't, I still haven't, uh, <laughs> I still have 105 code. I think it is. Stay uh, with it for right now. I was going to go to the next one and then I heard all the stuff and then I was going to go to the, the next one. And then I was listening to you guys last podcast, I believe, oh, by the way, Bruce, I'm sorry to hear about the little puppy who can't yes, uh, yes. see it anymore. My, my cookie is blind Poor little, poor little thing. Um, Thank but, uh, and and same to Kathy. That's that's sorry to hear. Um, but I I was hearing uh, you guys talk about the new code update and and one 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 one, and I still haven't convinced myself yet to to do it yet. <laughs> it's, Don't it's do another, it. Don't do it. Yeah, Keep it. It's another yeah. one of those things where some people are having issues, other people are having absolutely no issues. So, but it's I mean, a logical. It's a what? It's illogical. It's illogical. 
Yes. Do you have it, Ron? Uh, I have one one zero. Okay. And I've had no issues with that. I it it did. I like what it did with the modes. Um, just making that a little easier. The um, I mean, I am experiencing the one issue that one 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 fixes, but it's really not a big deal. Basically, when the Slimer is moving, the E and the PKE the the insert will flicker along oh, while yes. the motor's moving. So. I mean, I noticed that, and I, I thought it was just a bad light board. But actually, when I saw that, it's like, oh, cool. That can actually be fixed. Awesome. Mm-hmm. But I, I haven't put it on yet. I'll probably put it on. The only, the, Honestly, the only thing that turned me off to it was the, the weak flipper thing. Some people were saying, you know, they get like a weak left yeah. flipper if they put it on. But other people were like, I put it on, played like 30 games, and I haven't had a single issue. So Yeah, I was reading that, too. I, that was another reason I, I didn't switch it, because I don't have... You know, with 105, I don't, I don't have any issues that I can really see that are major, you know. Um, so I, I, I'll just look at it as well. I'll play this for a while, and I still haven't even put like I got the topper, and I got uh, the side armor, and a couple things. I still haven't put those on yet. Like I'm gonna do things in pieces, <laughs> and then film a video. Okay, so you did get the topper, the uh, police light thing. I had to. I, I'm, you know, it, it was, it was too. Exp- it, to me, it was a little too much money. But when they first announced Ghostbusters, um, I was talking to Trudeau about it, um, and he, he's he's a he's a really cool guy. I was, I mean, he's he's a theater person too, so we have a little bit of a little bit of stuff in common. And when we were talking about it, I go, you know, what'd be really cool as a topper is is the is the the top of the light bar, the Ecto One. And he just smiled and goes, I think you're going to be happy. And I, I I I mean I haven't I mean I've seen it in person, but not actually lit up yet. But to me, that, it's cool. to me that's a no brainer. I mean, especially with the premium. Or the Pro, where the Ecto-1 is on the side of the cabinet. I think that's, it just makes sense to me. I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it looks really good. I actually uh, I actually put one on and for uh, one of our local guys who has a premium also, and it looks really good. It's actually a really nice topper. Very I've, cool. always been a, I've always been a fan of any kind of sirens or lights or like, you know, like, uh, like even back when High Speed came out, you know, I just love the fact that it was a, Police siren, or you know, just just something, something fascinating with that. And you know, F fourteen Tomcat, pretty, pretty lights, pretty, pretty lights. lights, yay! <laughs> okay. That F4- would be an interesting collection, like the all the all police light collection. Yeah, you'd have like what high speed getaway, a European millionaire, um, yep. F fourteen Tomcat, Lethal Weapon three, a safe cracker. You know, I think you were at my. I think Bruce, you were at, and Ron, you might have been too at one of my last parties where I had a, a project F14 Tomcat, um, and it was up and running enough that we could play it. And when those beacon lights go off in a little basement, I mean, I remember I went outside and looked through the the, the window into the basement. It was like this giant halo of light coming through. You know, people next door probably thought it was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean. Like in in my basement, I put. F fourteen Tomcat and get away on opposite sides of the uh, of the basement so they wouldn't like you know overpower <laughs> each other and it, mm-hmm. so so how, how are you doing on your airball count with Ghostbusters? Um, you know, uh, I I got that protector from Florida. Um, the guy that made it, uh, I can't remember who made it. Is that the little shop guys? Maybe it could um, be curly. Could be curly. Yeah. Well, I think I, think I, was, I feel like I bought was, mine from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I put that on, and uh, I mean, I get one every once in a while. It seems to bounce off of something and hit the wire wire uh, ramp that goes across the right ramp. But it's not. I've I've only had maybe one ball jump the rail, the out lane. Um. And that's no more than like, you know, the demolition man, demolition man I played at York that was completely shopped out and waxed. So I know I, I just I don't I'm not getting any more air balls on this than I did on Star Trek. They might be the all time stern air, air ball, ball game. games. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. And I have both of them. And I, I would say Ghostbusters. I have had so many air balls. I've, I've had ones that almost hit the Ecto like mirror. I've had them go into the buildings, go on top of things. It, wow. it scares me, and I have the pla- I have the plastic thing in front of the ramp, which has actually prevented a lot of them because it's gotten yeah. hit a lot. <laughs> a lot of that stuff scares me. Like the, the Star Trek, basically, any that warp ramp when it hits yep. 
when it hits the the and, and I changed the rubber on the post because it's got like um the, the small rubber on the top that gets chewed up anyway and totally disintegrates. I replaced it with like a uh, sleeve rubber, like a cliffy yeah. sleeve rubber that I cut because it's a little too long, and that actually decreased a lot of the air balls. But I still get them, and they're mostly from hitting that. And I've had it literally hit that, fly over, and hit the Enterprise. You know, the one oh, by wow. the right slings that far. So that that wow. scares me. I remember. Uh, I remember Transformers. Uh, <laughs> you know, you would hit that Megatron target, and it would fly. I think it was in, my, in one of the. Vi- I think I did it in the video. If you took the glass off the game and you actually hit hit the Megatron target straight on. It would fly out of the game if you took the glass off. Yep. <laughs> now, um, did you do anything with the Scolari targets? Because I put those pinball life springs on them because I had them ready to go. And I have not. I can hit those targets square on and the ball doesn't jump or anything. They work perfectly. So uh, I had I put those same springs on and the targets were flawless. Um, after a while, they annoyed me to the point where I disabled them. Ah, I got you. I got just, you know, <laughs> because, you know, they're not really worth anything and they block every key shot at the wrong time. And, and it's like, come on, yeah. come on. The game is hard enough, at least for me. Yeah, it is. It and, is. And let's, yeah, just, and let's just tell our listeners, uh, Mr. Bucci is an excellent player. His initials are on many, many games, especially if you go to the York <laughs> show. I have seen his initials on many games there. <laughs> well, you're no, you're no slouch either, my friend. And uh, yet. Uh, but you know what? I have to tell you, I'm really happy with the game, though. Um, it it kicks my butt, and yet I still want to play another one. So I can't uh, I can't speak for you, but that is a good thing for me because there are some games that I get my butt whooped, and I go, you know what? I don't even enjoy playing this. Uh, with Ghostbusters, I don't know. There's something about the overall integration of the theme and the music and the dots, and then the the way it plays. Aside from once in a while, the cheap drains coming out of the pops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty. I, I, there's been a number of times, even if the ball's coming down that right rail, I get nervous because it doesn't. It sometimes just wants to go down the middle. I get really. That makes me a little angry. But other than that, <laughs> I really. I'm going to have something with every game. So whatever. I'm, I'm really happy. I don't know if you are. I, I feel like it was worth the money. Well, I'm. I'm happy because it was worth the money for me. That's the one you won, right? Yeah, yes, I won. Yes. So it was worth it for me. <laughs> I'll say the Ghostbusters keeps it keeps it just it's sliding. I have to keep moving it back to the right a little yep. bit because it keeps sliding to the left a little bit as I have to save mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. those um, down the center drains. Uh, I, I have started to vary the strategy because it was just frustrating the hell out of me because I kept going to the modes on the right, like the four. The four modes, like, you know, who brought the dog? Yeah, and, the, uh, and, brought yeah the dog. And, and you just keep every game, like, I would just play the same modes and it would just yeah. end over and over. So I started to just go through the librarian and the, and the ramp modes instead, mm-hmm. which I, I've had better luck with. Yeah. The, the, what's the one on the ramp? Uh, you got, uh, we got one and, uh, is it Spook Central? Yeah. Spook, Spook Central. And then, and then um, the, the ballroom. The ball yeah, the ballroom I can't finish. I have been there. Now, granted, I have 105, so the mode does not continue when you drain. But I just I don't know what it is. I can't seem to get through that doggone ballroom. And the flowers are still standing. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if anyone get that at all? The only the only the only thing I can say, and I don't know if you felt this or not, as you get deeper in the game, you start to hear a lot more quotes, and you realize there yes. are actually a lot of quotes. Yes, and, you start and, and, you start hitting the flipper buttons, and you hear all these quotes. I think there are times though during some dead spots in the game where some random quotes would actually be quite nice. It feels like it, it feels like there's a little lack of personality during a few of the empty moments in the game, and and and. And the quotes don't have to make sense. Ghostbusters 1 and 2, to me, are some of the most quotable movies. I think just something random uh, is fine. You know, it just, uh, I don't know if you feel that, but that's the only one thing that I think about every once in a while. Yeah, I I love the music in that game. Oh, God. That, that might me be too. one of the best music packages they've had in a while, as far as like every, every mode has its own theme. And every once yep. in a while, if I start, like, I, I was playing it today, I started some kind of mode or something, not one of the main modes, some kind of thing that I'd never been in before. 
and the music's different. I go, what music is this? I must be in yeah. something. I don't know what I'm in, but I'm in something. And it all, it all is, it all is amazingly Ghostbusters ish. Like even the, even the, I just, even the shooter lane music, I don't know what it, that is so Ghostbusters one. Yeah. Like, you know, when you're just sitting there, I could listen to that all day. I love it. And we got one. We got one, one is my... the boys are back in town. Yeah. That's basically. Boys are back in town. Yeah. 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 That's when I hear mm-hmm. that. It's the first thing I think of. <laughs> I mean, one thing I think is interesting and, and I, I, I should have done this is in Ghostbusters, there is a pinball game and that's Stargazer. It's mm-hmm. in the, uh, it's in the uh, firehouse and it's on the, the Ghostbusters game. Like if you look at the firehouse, Yep. Uh, plastic or the you know the, the molded piece you can see it in the window and if you look yeah. close you can see it's a stargazer i have a stargazer so i thought it'd oh, be funny you? i thought it'd be funny as hell to put it next to it it's like look it's ghostbusters and there's stargazer right next to ah, it. dude that's perfect I, i'll tell you what i i that's the other thing too i love the art package on it um it, it's just it's so i don't know the, the whole concept of it being original art created specifically for this game there's just something exclusive about it you know it's not pulled from um you know it's not graphic design that was made for a movie or something and pulled and put into something i mean i'm fine with that too but i just mean i don't know there's something beautiful about that and uh jeremy packer uh zombie yeti he was really cool to me he signed my translate for me and he's a really really nice guy you can tell he really loves what he does and he's working on the next game with John Trudeau, whatever, what whatever, whatever that may be. That they said that yeah, they won't say what the game is, but he's working I, on it with I, it. So I couldn't get that out of John, but you know, it tr- I tried. <laughs> yes, you won't hear that in the interview. Sadly, what what game did they really start with doing the, the good art again? Was was it like Metallica? I'm trying to think. Was like, it Metallica? Yeah, it it's, it's at some point they just kind of like, okay, let's do actual art. And then, you know, you had Metallica and you had Ghostbusters, you know, and then you're going to have Aerosmith's going to have that kind of art. Uh, yep. You know, the Batman, well, the Batman is licensed stuff, but still, it's it's mostly original art. Mm-hmm. Batman 66, so. Have, have you seen any of that, Chris, the Batman 66? Any any opinions on that? There's Bruce. I thought we lost him. Um, I was just letting you two go because you're two <laughs> Ghostbuster fiends and I'm the one that's going, eh. Yeah, you're like, eh. Um, a Batman. You know what? I, I mean, I've been following. I followed the initial release at Expo, uh, and that kind of stuff. And I've been, uh, but I'm not really. I'm 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 done with getting games for a while. Um, so I'm not really in. I'm not really. I don't have you know any money into this one. I was hoping they would have one set up possibly at Stern when I was there the week after Expo, but they didn't. Uh, I, I was nudging. Uh, I think it was. Uh, it wasn't John. It was Sullivan, Dwight Sullivan when he was talking to me. He was really nice. Everybody at Stern was really, really nice, by the way. I was by myself, and they treated me like like they were just really, really, really kind people. And Dwight was like, we're lucky any of us have even seen it. <laughs> was, uh, was, was Dwight very hyper like he usually is? Um, I think I was more hyper than he was. Okay. So he oh, was wow. actually trying to. He, he, cause I was so excited to be there. And all of a sudden it was like, all these people came in while John and I were just hanging out. Like all of a sudden, all these people that I had never met before, like you guys, you know, you guys have met most of them. I've, I've been to, I've never been to an expo. I've never met. So all of a sudden here comes, here comes, you know, Steve Ritchie, he comes out and I'm talking with him and he's signing my couple translates I brought and then in comes uh, Lonnie Rob and in comes Dwight Sullivan. And I'm going, oh, oh, Hey, Hey guys. Hey, da, 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 da. so I think I, I think I was freaking them out, but that's all right. <laughs> and Steve Ritchie told you, you have way too many Lawler games. You need more of my games. Well, I actually brought in uh, my, well, ironically, Dwight and Steve, I brought in my getaway uh, translate because um, I'd forgotten that Dwight, saw, I mean, that he did that back in 92, you know, or 90, whatever. And, um, and Steve, I said, well, I wasn't sure, Steve, if I was allowed to bring a Williams translate into Stern. So I was kind of hiding it. And he just laughed at me. So, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't bring any Jersey Jack stuff in there, though. They might get upset about that. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's. So you have you have your videos. You make you're making your videos, and again, well, we will plug the the YouTube channel for those listening. It's and it's, it's weird spelling, so you got to get this right. S P I D A, the number one A. Yep. 
Yeah, because because when I signed up for YouTube, Spider One was taken, and Spider One was my basically my email address, so I was stuck. <laughs> and I noticed if you spell it wrong, like S P One D A, it comes right up. So if if you mess it up that way and you're searching in YouTube, it'll still come up, and it's very obvious. You can see the uh, the turbo the turbo views, and the uh, the pinball videos. And I was thought you, you, funny. You mentioned this before, like the angry video game nerd. I, I thought they were, should be like the the angry pinball nerd. Who just plays <laughs> games? It just says how much they suck. Like you know, I don't know. Have like X Files with the the filing cabinet. Like, well, look at this. That, what were they thinking? That would be funny. This yeah. game is ass. I feel I find myself using that term now as a verb. The game is ass. Game is ass. Yeah. <laughs> one of the videos I can't remember. I was I was getting angry in one of them, and then and it felt weird to me uh, because. I'm generally not, um, at least when it comes to my hobbies, I'm not usually a downer or negative person. If I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole, I'm just going to be angry and nitpick and be mean. Cause if I don't like something, I am just not going to take part in it. So most of my videos are actually kind of upbeat. <laughs> They're usually pretty, pretty, you know, easygoing. So I don't, I don't really get too angry. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a good candidate for that. Don't watch my Star Trek video then. My Star Trek has, video. He mentioned your Star Trek video. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. In 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 Stern's defense, that's the only game I ever had issues with, but it just happened to be a lot of issues, unfortunately. See, that's what happened with me with Transformers. So when I talk about it, you know, I'm not really I I I like Stern and uh um and they've they've been great to me, you know. Just sadly I, I happen to get a lemon. Now Mr. Bucci's done lots of videos, including the new Star Trek, as uh, Ron has also. He's also done some famous games and some sentimental sentimental games for himself like the f- most famous video you've done besides family guy which ron talked about in the beginning that's that's sold so many games for jersey jack is big bang bar yep you were the first person to really truly videotape big bang bar tell us a little bit about that, that, <laughs> that was and, a and one of the only people i knew that actually had one or had ordered one well, that was if Family Guy and Big Bang Bar. That, that was a different. That was a different era for me. I was like about yeah, three hundred pounds then. <laughs> well, that's right. We should say you know Chris is now. Uh, he is he is buff Bucci. He is well, no. melt. He is yeah, no. melt. No, no, no. <laughs> Photoshop is is thy friend. Oh, he's photoshopping um, all his <laughs> videos. Okay. <laughs> No, but it's hard just... body bodies are plastered on. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. He'll be on hard body. What well, we should ask you, like just for people who don't realize that when, when big bang bar was announced originally, and this is, a, I have to ask you how you got in on the train or if you, sure. if you, no be, because originally it, it, it was made by Illinois pinball, the remake, which was, um, Oh God, help me here, Bruce. What was his name? Gene Cunningham, G- Gene Cunningham in, in Illinois pinball. They had the rights to Capcom, and they were gonna, they were gonna do Big Bang Bar, and he, if I remember, there was only two major signups, at least events where there was signups. There was one, I think it was in Texas, it was Texas and then yes. a second one at Expo, which was in 2004. And I know this because that was the first Expo I went to. And if people are listening to this, they're going to cry when they hear the price. I, 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 went to, I went to every seminar that year. So I'd never been to the show. I wanted to go to like every seminar. And I went to that seminar, and they handed out the flyer. And like, you can get in on this for $4,500. It's Big Bang Bar. I just remember, and, and I'm thinking, this is 2004. I'm like, wow, $4,500. That's a lot of money. You know, so i just wondering <laughs> how, how you got in on that. When there was very limited, I, I, there was a limited amount of people who were able to get in on that. At that time, uh, and uh, I've, I've, I generally pick up games that are they're my favorites or ones that I grew up with or something like that, you know. But every once in a while, I feel like getting something different, like Safe Cracker, for example. You had mentioned earlier, Bruce. Remember we talked about, you know, I never really played that game on location. I was playing it on Visual Pinball. And being a big Lawler fan like I was, that was one that I'd never seen before. And I felt like having something different in the collection. So I picked that game up. Um, And Big Bang Bar happened to come around at a time where I just, uh, I really wanted something different in the collection. And I remember hearing about the signups at Texas and signups at whatever. And then they had, it was, I think it was on Rec Games Pinball. 
Yes, it uh, was. They had posted that they were still taking some other signups. Um, and uh, if they made me do a video, you know, to become one of them, I probably would have. But um, speaking of Batman, right? But uh, I, <laughs> very good. I, yeah, I, um, I, I don't know. I just they 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 needed half the money up front as a deposit, and then you would pay the other half when it was delivered. And at that point, forty five hundred bucks, that was more than I'd ever paid for anything. You know, my what was that? What did you say? What was that again? Two thousand four. Yes. Um, you know, my, my monopoly was 3,400 and my, uh, Ripley's believe it or not was well, my T3 was 3,500, you know, so 4,500 bucks. That was a big thing at the time. Now then you see what I paid for ghostbusters and you go, well, that's <laughs> nothing now, but, um, and I don't know. I just, I was reading up on it. I thought it was a neat idea Like people weren't doing that then it's not like that was a regular thing reproducing games you know hey i've i bought out this company i've got a a a little under a couple hundred translates and a little under a couple hundred board sets and i'm gonna go ahead and recreate all the rest of the stuff and put a game together and i don't know i found that extremely fascinating so i took a chance and i felt comfortable from a legal standpoint i remember talking it over with a friend of mine who's a lawyer (laughs) about what i could possibly be getting into and we felt very comfortable about it and so i took a chance and i i put the money down figuring okay they said it's going to take about about a year and a half or so for the delivery so i thought well that gives me a year and a half to save the rest of it up and then of course it took twice that long but uh but i remember i remember chris actually talking to me like two years in Saying, what do you think's gonna happen, Bruce? Is it ever gonna happen? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, Chris. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> well, they were really good for a while. At uh, there was like a separate group that yep. you could join uh, with, like a you know, you had to be only only people that bought the game were able to join it, and they would put up photos yeah, and they would Google. update you. It was, a, it was a Google group. I remember that. Right. Yep. Yep. And uh, and so I was very warm and fuzzy when I would see new parts coming in, and you know, and. And they would talk about, you know, Gene would talk about some of the the things he would do to, to make the parts better. Some of the stuff that wasn't working as well on the original prototypes and all that. And then that kind of started to, probably around the time I was asking you, Bruce, it started to fizzle a little bit to where I was going, uh, well. And then they asked for the second half of the money a little earlier because uh, than they had originally said. And I was like, uh, okay. but uh, <laughs> But they followed through. In 2007, man, that thing was sitting in my house, and it was freaking gorgeous. <laughs> it was sitting in a lot of people's houses, usually in a box, getting ready to be sold. They realized how much it was worth. Oh, my God. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, correlating that to the videos, uh, Bruce was in my Big Bang Bar unboxing. Yes, I was. Uh-huh. With I'm act- I think I'm actually the second most person in your videos. Uh, probably. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think so. I, which I'm very honored. Actually, that's a, to me, that's like, wow. You know, cause I've known Chris so long. Chris, I actually met Chris one time. I think you went up, I went to one of your parties yes, way, you back, did. way back when in 2005 and you, or 2000. you were one, you were one of the first people that came in from out of town. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like most of the time I'd get people within a certain radius and you actually came in from out of town. I remember thinking that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I, I, I we, ever since now, I think I've been friends with Chris for 11 years now, and yep. it's been a really good, great relationship. And when he asked me to come out for videos, and then I've actually sold him games. I've actually sold him my uh, Earthshaker. I still, have, I still have it. And I was mentioned in his video for that, and I mentioned now in Star Trek. He's been actually at my house for unboxings for Black Spider Man, which is yep. really cool, and also for Spider uh, for Tron. You were, for, were you for Tron? Uh, no, I missed no. Tron. You missed Tron, uh, that was there right? For Star Trek LE. Yeah, with the uh, broken shooter rod. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, you know, Chris's videos have always made me feel really good about the hobby. You know, Chris's attitude towards the hobby is a positive one, as he said, and it yeah. really shows in the way he represents pinball in his videos. <laughs> it's just amazing. Well, I appreciate that. That means a lot. I mean, it, it, I'm, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't presume to, to, to say anything other than, uh, the truth, you know, no, and, and you did, you actually said, you know, you in the video for big bang bar, you said, Hey, I didn't know at the time it was gonna, even going to come out until voila, I had to get the rest of the <laughs> well, money, you know? And I remember that because I believe if I'm not mistaken, I interviewed you 
yep. while you were playing the game and I interspersed because I remember my ex fiance, you know, the one that I eventually yes. moved to New York City after Jamie. Yeah, uh, she was in there. She was helping a lot with that, too. Uh, she was being interviewed then in there. And somebody else who else? Boy, I can't remember. A couple we other had, people from uh, Buffalo, wasn't we it? Had, we had Shelby out from uh, Shelby. Yeah. Yeah. And we also had Billy Fugel. That's right, Billy. OK, that was a lot and, of fun. Oh, it was great. And, you know, it just w- the way we, we got to play it, that was just the first thing. I was like, woohoo, we get to play Big Mike Bar and woohoo, it's only four <laughs> hours away. And woohoo, I'm having a great time. And it was just really cool. Well, I have to tell you, I have to give them props. Uh, the, the people that sat there in garages and stuff and put these games together, because, I mean, they were, you, I mean, you saw when we pulled it out of the box. I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, it, it oh, I yeah. Mean, oh, yeah. He had a lot of dedicated people. Yes, he did. Who I think all, all got them. pissed off and all eventually like, you know, <laughs> like, screw you. We're not helping you make Kingpin. Well, here's <laughs> here's here's the kind of friend Mr. Bucci is. We had the, I think it was the third Rochester pinball game room show. Uh, and yes. I asked Chris for two games. And you would think, you know, Chris might give me a monster bash or something like that. No, Chris goes, well, what do you want? So I went, I want Big Bang Bar. And now, wait a sec. This, don't forget, at the time, now this was growing in value, too. Plus, he goes, okay, I'll take, I'll let you have Big Bang Bar. What else do you want? <laughs> what else do I want? Okay. I go, how about Taxi? Now, Taxi is another game that's very dear to Mr. Star, and we're going to talk about that. that one. Remind me, is, is, isn't that the, we, we couldn't get the tilt to work? Yes. The Big, the big Bang Bar, the tilt, uh, the Big Bang Bar, the tilt did not work. That's the only thing that did not work. And like, it was, it was wired up, right? It just did not yep. register. You know, back to, but to, <laughs> at the Rochester show, which no, you might walking. actually were you were you going to get into this, Bruce? Oh uh, yeah, I was walking. We were oh. everyone was walking that game, and I'm sitting there going, "It's an expensive game, Star Wars." I was ready to actually almost like take it out, but everyone was kind to it. They moved it a little. Oh, yeah. they, we gave it a lot of room in between it. Was that the one at the Armory? That's the one yes, the Armory. Yes. Yeah, is that yes. the one that had like the Sopranos that like Trent walked out of the building also? Yes, he did. Yeah, okay, I just see, I remember details like that. That's the one that Gene Cunningham was at, and I remember him saying. What kind of an idiot? <laughs> what kind of an idiot would have his Big Bang Bar at a show like this? I remember him saying that while I was at his table, a- about to ask him to sign something for me. Uh, <laughs> I said, "That's me." <laughs> uh, well, you guys kept it in the you guys kept it in the tournament area, and I think it yep. was only used for that. But but uh, so that made me a little more comfortable. Oh, but yeah. you remember the guy. Um, and I don't remember, but he was really, really nice. The guy that worked for him that was at his booth came over to look at the tilt and could yes. not figure it out either. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I remember that tournament because I think that's that's where I that's where I picked the um Yeah, that's where I picked up the Star Trek the um Spider Man. Yep. I picked it because cause I brought a roller games for the tournament. Yes, you did. So you know so he, Chris brings this I grabbed the games from him, both taxi and that. And the show happened what it was January, February. I actually had Big Bang Bar and Taxi in my living room for five <laughs> months, four months. Yes, you did. Oh my like, god! You had to bring it back. I had until I had to bring it back. Darn. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's just the kind of friend Chris has always been to me. Well, Taxi. you know what? Let me tell you. It'll it'll sit in my basement. It'll be played a lot when I have a party. Which it, it, by the end of the two thousands, I wasn't having as many. Other than that, I mean. <sighs> I, it just wasn't going to get any, it wasn't going to get to be played. And I thought, here's a chance for people who really would love to see it to get to play it. And it's not going to do any damage to it, you know? And so I just, I was really happy to be able to do that. And, and I was appreciative at how, you know, how well you took care of it and all that. <laughs> you know, I was, I was thinking about this. You know, I, I think that we, I might've met you two the same night for the first time. Because I, I really? remember, because when I went to Bruce Bruce's party, oh yes, the one at, in my house. at his old place, yeah. I think Chris was there. Because I, I remember, uh, I remember hey. you playing Champion Pub, and it had an issue where you hit a certain yes. switch, it would reset. Yes. Oh yes, that was Jamie was with me too. Yep. Yeah, yep. and that was, down. First, that, yep. was the first, that was the that first. That was the time. first time you ever saw a Champion Pub, and yep. of course, mine and didn't work. work. <laughs> yeah. 
And and so literally, so I could say the first time I saw it, it was both of you the same day. Because yep. I remember I, I I played Black Knight 2000. I played like one ball and it slam tilted. Because <laughs> you had like the manual leaning against the um something was leaning against the slam tilt yep, switch. Slam tilt. Yep. So I'm there, you know, I go to this guy's house and I break his game immediately. Yeah, yeah you're not welcome back here. Yeah, it's like nope, the first done. person's party I think I ever went to, and it was freaking Rochester. If I'm not mistaken, Bruce, was that right after the party I had where you won the safe cracker topper and yes. you needed it? Ironically, yes, I you needed it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on my and it actually he came out a couple months later and he saw it. It was up on there. It was. It was all pretty and yeah. Had, I I I just really enjoyed you know those days when games were cheap. God, we can actually go. Oh yeah. Back in the old days, we games were cheap and fun and well. And again, uh, if I may, Ghostbusters is in my basement because of Big Bang Bar. <laughs> yes, it is. Unfortunately, Big Bang Bar has sailed to it a has sailed. pastured. But, uh, but it, you it, know what? The guy that has it, the guy that has it is a, a really big collector in Canada. And he was really, really generous and really cool. And he sent me pictures of it in his collection. And he also let me keep the plaque, which yes. had my name on it. Uh, which I thought was really awesome. It, it had the number of the game and it had my name on it because I think it's uh, number 34. We, 34 so he he, i that was really really cool of him and because of it i was able to buy ghostbusters which i really wanted and then put the money the rest of the money away because there was more (laughs) oh yeah a lot more oh yeah well while we've been talking hold on while we've been talking Uh uh-huh eight ball is sold oh eight ball is sold eight ball is sold of course none of our listeners may know that it was for sale but uh bruce had it listed on facebook what's an eight ball (laughs) Ah. <laughs> and then I also have my freedom up for sale and my embryon embryon. So oh, yes, I saw your Facebook post on that. I believe. Yep. yep. So, uh, <laughs> the eight ball is gone. It will be gone Friday. So bow our heads in silence. Bow our heads in silence. It's funny. I'm on, I'm on your YouTube channel, Chris. And one of the, the first related channel that comes up is Cinemassacre, which is the, uh, angry video game nerds. Uh, oh, there channel. you go. So well, there I you did- go. <laughs> I did aud- I did audition uh, <laughs> for the Angry Video Game Nerd movie uh, because uh, I was living in New York City at the time and he was having auditions in Philadelphia and I sent my resume and they had me come in and read an audition. Um, I didn't get a call, but that's you weren't okay. angry was- enough. You weren't angry enough. I just wasn't angry enough. I'm gonna unsubscribe from his channel now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody done. unsubscribe. Done. Come to mine. Uh, yes. But no, but that was cool. That was a cool experience. <laughs> So let's uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into because we we mentioned this last week and then I said it's a clue on who our guest is going to be and that's the fact that we mentioned Taxi. Yes. Oh, and when I think of Chris, that's usually the game I think of. Yes. Yep. That's the last one to go if things need to ever go. Mm-hmm. Yes. And why is that? The 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 uh, the video I did on Taxi tells you a lot of that, but there, there's a lot to talk about with that one. Uh, it, we're almost at an hour. How long is your podcast? Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling on. No, this is, no, this no. is the Thanksgiving edition. Yes. Oh, there so we go. People are going to be gets, driving. Yeah. Good. They're yeah. going to be driving. They're going to be doing a lot of stuff around the house. So they need something to listen to. Well, so. thanks, guys. I, lo- I love you all. Um, <laughs> I started when I when I am. Um, I, I, I say all the time that high speed and I told Steve this when I talked to him, I said high speed was the game that really got me to notice and play pinball more than just a novelty game in the corner. And the Williams games, especially they came out in that era. I just, I don't know there was one after another pin, uh, Pinbot and F 14 Tomcat and cyclone. I, it was just something about those games, but taxi, I don't know why I, to this day, I'll never know, but that game, that game cemented my pinball addiction. I could not get enough of taxi when I was younger, my skills as a pinball player were getting better, but they were not good enough to really ever get all the passengers yet. I would maybe get them all once in a while and get the jackpot once in a, you know, once in a while, but it just, the, the music and the theme and the, and the humor and the sounds and the, and the layout and the crisscross. I don't know. There was just something about that game. I could not get enough of it. Um, it, it became a favorite of mine for a long time. And so it is the most nostalgic game for me for that reason. Cause it just attracted me for, for many, many years. 
And when I went to buy my first game ever when I was 15, and I called a, a local operator, and I said, hey, I'm looking to buy a game. I don't know anything about this. Uh, <laughs> do you happen to have any Williams games from the 80s? But at this point, it's 1992, late 92. And um, he says, well, I don't know. Is there anyone you're looking for? Well, I said taxi right away, thinking there's no way that this guy is going to sell his taxi or that he even still has one. You know, who knows? Because there were a couple of operators, a few of them at the time around here. Um, and then the putt-putt guys were separate because they had their own games. So uh, he goes, you know what? I do happen to have a taxi, and it's sitting uh, it's sitting at a restaurant bar down the whatever, and it's not working. we got to pull it out of there, but I'd be willing to sell that to you. And I went, wait, what? Huh? Really? So I I asked him how much. I think it was 700 bucks, maybe. And Blasphemy. I had been, Blasphemy. Too much money. I had been, <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I'd been saving for so long and I thought, you know, Christmas is coming up and my birthday is not too long. So I, you know, I went up to mom and me and can I have extra money? <laughs> and so, you know, whatever. So I put the money down on it and like literally three months later, he finally got it out of the location and got it fixed up and brought it to my house. So wait a minute. So you got your first game when you were 15. Well, my birthday, I paid for it when I was 15, and I got it when I was 16, because it came right after my birthday. Yes. And, and Bruce, when did you get yours? Uh, 13. Wow. 13, 14, right around there. I was like 31. I feel like I'm just so <laughs> far behind. Sorry. You are. Don't worry. Yeah, I you are. I am. Continue. That's, I mean, uh, uh. <laughs> we're talking about? You're talking oh, yes. about how you got your game, yes. Well, that's that's the taxi. I mean, my grandfather worked for GE Transportation. He was a draftsman, and he used to draw the locomotives, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. Um, and he was also an engineer, so he taught me, you know, how to solder, and he taught me how to just kind of strip wire and you know look for certain things. Thank goodness, because when a wire would pop off, because you know they spit and duct taped it together. I hate to say, uh, these guys. When a wire would come loose or something silly, I could fix it. But when it became something a little more complicated, uh, they would come up from the from the vending company and they would help me fix it. Um, but I learned a lot from watching them and just you know kind of digging in there. Uh, and then when we moved into the new house, uh, when we moved from from the apartment that we were into the house, and I had this basement room to mess with, that's when I started getting more than one game. But that taxi, unfortunately, it just was you know it just it had. It was just falling apart after a handful of years. So I ended up trading it for something else. And then, and this is the long winded way to get here. The taxi I have now was, um, I, I can't remember how I ended up coming across it. It was just something somebody had for sale on the news group. And then he put me in touch with somebody else. This taxi was a, it was a tournament game at pinball expo, 1988. And, you know, like, you know, they used to always, they would always donate a, a row of games, you know, for their tournaments at Expo. I think they still do, don't they? No, they don't do that anymore. Uh, they they, uh, they nope, stopped that around 2005, five? Five, six. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's been for, a while. for listeners, what they used to do is they, and it would be back when there were multiple manufacturers, they'd be like maybe one year would be Checkpoint. Yeah, you know, from Data East, another year be Taxi from Williams. You know, another year might be a Gottlieb game, and that's what they would do for the tournament. So in 1988, it was Taxi. It was Taxi, and there's a there's some pictures of it. I haven't actually was able to get them uh, for the video that I put together. You can see them actually there. There was a row of them at the at the con at the convention, and well, supposedly from what I hear from the guy I bought it from, the the person who won it, and I'm not sure who that was, won the game. So they won this machine as a prize. And then literally they traded it to somebody at the convention because they didn't want it. So they traded it to somebody else. This person had it in their house, I think for a free, few years set up and then he packed it away and it had been sitting in his storage facility for, I'm not even sure, maybe under a decade. Uh, it just been sitting there. And that's in 2002 when I came along and I happened to get it and I bought it from him. I can't remember how much I spent. Um, it wasn't a lot. But I, it, it was, I mean, you know, taxis, they have that, most of them have that factory applied mylar in the center. Um, and the areas around the mylar get all dirty, pitted, beat up. 
you know, and if you know Taxi and Bruce, you know, you're, you, you, you have your own. And the, it's a um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the outer, you know, the, the entire play field is, is a street. It's a road. And so it's all cement. It's gray. And the middle part where the mylar is, is generally the normal gray. It stays the same color, but outside the mylar, um, the gray turns like a black and it gets discolored and it turns almost like a, a brownish black, um, and gets beat up and chipped. And most taxis I see, including my original, which I, you know, when I originally bought it, you know, it had that kind of wear. And this taxi did not. It, the gray was the same outside the mylar as it was under the mylar. There were a couple pe- a couple chips that were happening where a couple inserts were starting to raise up, you know, like by Santa Claus. But um, um, and if you don't know the game, that sounds very weird. But uh, but uh, you know, you know, by Dracula's hand near Santa Claus there. Um, so I took it. Um, I never really had done this before, but I just really. At that point, play field reproductions and stuff weren't really being done. You know, um, I did not. I wanted to preserve this original play field, especially since it was a Maryland, too, which was cool because those were the ones I really played when I was a kid. And that's the one I had. And uh, <laughs> I sent it to Bill Davis. Remember Bill Davis? Yes, Bill Davis. He is, he is still actually doing Really? Very rare. He still is he really? Once a, really? Once in a blue moon, yes. Because Bill Davis in the... The early days, he was one of your um, clear coders. You'd send your play Absolutely. field to him to get fixed up, clear coded. He actually did my Stargazer I have. He did that play field for the, okay. the previous owner. And I remember he actually gave a – he was in one of the seminars. He had a seminar at the 2004 Expo. How long ago that was. Yep. He still does Once in a Blue Moon. I heard one person said he got one done last year. He's very – he, yeah. he, I think he only does a verse select few people. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he, he, he was very nice to me. I, I told him the story. I sent it to him. I took the Mylar off very carefully. Ooh, that was scary. Oh God. I took the Mylar off and, uh, it, it, it chipped up like one insert. Luckily, hardly nothing. It didn't do any damage really. So he, he touched up the area around Santa and Dracula that I was talking about. And then he, he, um, he did a little touch up in the, you know, a couple little places and then he cleared it up and then it came back and I was, I was just, I couldn't believe it. Like, cause I, <laughs> I'm actually not a, uh, I'm not a big, I don't do that with everything. Like some people, that's all they do. They get old play field. They clear them. I don't, I, I'm not as much into that. I don't mind keeping it. If it's nice, like, like your earth shaker, you know, Bruce, I mean, the mylar mm-hmm. isn't bubbling or anything no. horrible and outside the mylar, it's pretty nice. I did a little touch up and I put a couple pieces of mylar down and, and it's fine. Um, but this taxi, I just really wanted to preserve it. And when it was done, and so I did a full restore on it. And I had never done that before up to that point, aside from some shopping. So I got all new, you know, all new things, all new star posts, all that kind of stuff. And um, I got a new Translite. Actually, my eh, ex-fiance bought, surprised me, mm, Jamie. She bought that. it. Do you remember that? She bought it from oh, Mike yeah. Pesak. Yep. Um, and <laughs> I remember I wrote Mike because he said he had one. And... <laughs> He said, uh, yeah, I got one. And I go, and Maryland translate yet. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. that's like finding the Maryland flyer, which I do have. Um, holy crap. He was like, I have it. And then I kept bugging him. And then he goes, nah, uh, and he wouldn't get back to me here. I realized, well, it was because Jamie bought it for me as a present and I'm getting mad. I'm like, dude, what will you get me excited? And then you don't even have it. And then she gave it to me. And then I wrote him, Oh, Hey, thanks, man. I, I got it. Sorry, man. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry dude. Uh, but that, then I finished that up and I actually brought that game to the, the York pinball show, uh, in, in, uh, 2003, uh, when I had finished it, but yeah, underneath the lockdown bar, it actually has a, there's a, um, piece of masking tape that actually says pinball expo game or, or X, I think it might say expo game 88 or something like that. So I kept that on there. Very nice. It's kind of like the, uh, the, Black Knight 2000 T-shirt offer sticker yeah. that I that <laughs> yes. I preserved in the back, kept it on there. Sorry, that was such a long story, but that's, that's no, the, no, no, that's a great story. That's the reason why that one will probably be the last one to go if I had to sell everything off. It just means too much to me, and I still, I still love playing that game. I mean, how many times do I come over to your house, Bruce, and play the, oh. the you know, you know, play yours? I can't. I love, I love that game. game. I don't know. It's a great game. And, but luckily, luckily, Chris was with me. We bought mine at uh, Allentown out in the, mm-hmm. the, the uh, parking lot, and 
I grabbed Chris and we went out there and I had to borrow 25 bucks from him just to cover the rest of the money. And I paid it to him, of course, right back when we went back inside. But yeah, I, and I've had mine since. I don't remember getting that back. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you gave it back in love and friendship. Um, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, $25 yeah. in the parking lot. That didn't hey. sound good oh, either. Oh, bye. Yes, yes. yes. Parking oh. lot. Oh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I now? Can I ask you a question, Bruce, real quick? Because oh, yeah. your listeners might find this interesting. That Earthshaker that you sold me has a little bit of a story too. It does actually. Oh, I picked I that up in. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but uh, it was actually on RGP, and a guy was selling an Earthshaker, and I forget. I think it was a Whirlwind. They were both there, and I always wanted an Earthshaker. I had two or three Whirlwinds by then, but I always wanted a nice Earthshaker. And the guy really talked it up. I went down to. Uh, down by Paramus, actually, in some of the ritzier neighborhoods. And <laughs> I'm going through some of these neighborhoods, and uh, I get to this house. The guy's like, hey, it's a guarded gate. And I'm like, okay, I'm here in front of Oh, yeah, come on in. Yeah. Come to find out that it actually was owned by Eddie Murphy. <laughs> the pinball machine was actually there. Was you never told me owned. this. Nobody knows that except for Chris. And... And the podcast myself. listeners. <laughs> yeah, now everyone knows. So I actually went up, and he wasn't around. Nobody, yeah, it was his handler, and he's like, oh, yeah, here's the pinball machines. And I had to get do everything. Like, I was strapping up the game, bringing it outside. I couldn't dang him into will. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm ready to shoot myself. But got it out, got it in the car, and I had it for about a year, and then Chris, Chris saw it, and he fell in love with it. I did, yep. I always wanted one. That's another and- very nostalgic game for me. And, uh... And then when I heard the story behind it, that it was, you know, Eddie Murphy's machine yeah. that, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that's kind of neat. I didn't know that either when, you know, when I went nope. to get it, nope. um, it's a really cool little, and I have that, put the sinking building kit in there yes. and, uh, and it's still, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I love that game. I, I did. Well, well, when we brought it out to Chris, when we brought it out to Chris, we brought it out in a snowstorm, me and my father. <laughs> yes. By the time we got to Chris's house, there was like 10 inches on the ground. Mm. So we get there, we back up the truck, empty it out, set it all for him. It works perfect. And we're like, okay, Chris, I'm going to get going. He's like, whoa, come on, hang out, hang out and play some pinball. And you're like, no, it's snowing really bad outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah you guys wanted to get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, we did. And we, we, got, we got, finally got home. And, but yeah, it, I, you know, that's the good thing about it. You want to help other people out. And when it comes to, aka, you know, either Ron or, you know, a lot of my good friends, they'll, they know I will, I don't care, you know, games, you know, they're, they're only one thing, you know, friendships last a lot longer. They really mm-hmm. do. They really do. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you, man, guys. Man hug. Man Game hug. over, man. <laughs> Game over now. Next on Dr. Phil. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God, Dr. Phil. Chris, Ron, and Bruce talk about their friends. Oh, boy. What do you think about your problems with your pinball machines? Do you think it's going to happen this time? Do you think it's going to make you happy? Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to ask Chris, uh, what, what games you got now? What, what's, what does the collection look like? Well, you know what's funny? What, uh, real quick, I was going to mention this earlier. I have the back glass off of both my Star Trek and my Ghostbusters because I got them both signed and I hadn't put them back in yet. It's funny looking at the boards on the back box of Star Trek and then looking at the board at the back box of Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters being so Spike. small with the with Spike. Spike. It's, it's like there's nothing in there. <laughs> no, there's nothing. It doesn't need to be that big, but it, you know, I understandably now why it is. Yeah, but- sure, sure. The only issue is, though, it, yeah, there's only one board in there. Their, their new Spike system, the whole concept of fusing has seemed to go by the wayside. Because that, yeah. that's that Ghostbusters fix for the, the shorting situation. Like, mm. Since they have no fusing, it, it basically will blow out almost every board. Oh, boy. So the, their, their, their philosophy now is kind of with the way they have it set up. is like, it just replace the whole board. Or like they have the node boards, you know. So this board goes bad, just put a new board. Well, could, uh, hey, Ron, how long did it take you to... I'm not sure how long this has been going on. How long did it take you to... <laughs> To stop grabbing the bottom of the cabinet to turn on the game. A while. Uh, I a while. still do it. I yes, go, I go I, oh, yes. that's right. <laughs> yes, and my father does it every time and will probably continue <laughs> but, to do so. But don't forget, Gary Stern always says there's a quarter mile of wire. Now it's probably an eighth mile of wire because we couldn't afford that little extra distance, you know. 
Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty neat that it's. I, I'll say the one thing that sucks though. It takes forever to update. To have to update code on that. Yes. Oh you, yeah. You that's start what updating. I've heard. Just leave the room or go play something yep. else for twenty minutes because that's how long it's going to take. Wow. Because the code is like three gig. I think there's two or three yes. gig as compared to like an older like um, Sam game would be maybe thirty meg, forty meg. Right. Except some of the music games would be a little bit bigger because of all the songs, but. It's amazing how much larger it is. But it's stereo. It is. You can tell, too. You can hear yes, it. Yes, you can tell. You can hear, especially really, really nice. Ghostbusters does bring it out very nice with the music it has. The fact that it's with the stock spot stock speakers, too. I mean, I don't have the volume up that high, and I think it, it sounds pretty damn good for just stock speakers. It really does. Yeah. Um. Well, let's see. If I'm looking, because I'm sitting in... Um, in like the main room where the uh, some of the games are where we're talking right now. Well, I got Star Trek Premium, uh, Ghostbusters Premium. Uh, next to that's Family Guy and Tron, uh, Tron Pro. Those are my Sterns right now. Next to that, I got uh, we hit the Williams. We got No Good Gophers, Scared Stiff, Indiana Jones, Medieval Madness, and The Shadow. You want me to keep going? <laughs> keep going okay that's in the room in case you're wondering the vicinity of them um let's see now i have to think off the top of my head i got my lawler row over here it's adam's family whirlwind Earthshaker, and fun house then i've got the topper row <laughs> which is whitewater getaway and fishtails and then i've got uh, diner cyclone and taxi think Oh, and then my Terminator 3. I was about to say, where's that Terminator 3? You said you still had it. Don't forget that the T3. Yeah, that, that one I'm probably going to sell at some point here, but I can't. I think that's everything. Is that 20? I think that's 20. Um, but I've had, I mean, but I've had, I mean, you know how it is too. Yeah, I got 20 now, but I've probably had 60 some over the last 20, how many years? 15, 20, you know, trading and moving around and swapping and but I'm I'm actually very thankful, and I don't know if you feel this way, Bruce. And uh, I'm actually thankful I got into it when I did. When I mean, pinball was always expensive, but <laughs> I would not have the collection today if I started today. Um, there, there's no way I could spend the money on some of the. I don't think to me the games are not worth. I love the hobby, but I cannot say that games are worth the money they're going for. I'm sorry, they're just <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I mean, I haven't been in as long as Bruce, but they were a lot cheaper back in the day. And and seems certain games got, like, popular, and then all of a sudden ballooned. I, I remember when I started, you could get Whitewater at a reasonable price. Mm-hmm. And at some point, that became, like, this, this like, I, I don't know, diamond or yeah, something. Yeah, my, my, my Whitewater was 1600 oh. or something back in 2002. Oh. Oh. And it's nice. It was, it was, in, good, it was in good shape. I mean, now it's like three grand, four grand. I mean, like, and, and you have the Lawler row. I mean, all the Lawler games are expensive. I don't know yeah. what the deal is. I mean, I wonder if Steve Ritchie ever wonders, why aren't my games that expensive? Because <laughs> they made, it's not like you can say, well, they didn't make many of them. No, they made a ton of them. of them. They made a ton it ama- of them. It amazes me, and I love the game. So, again, this isn't me picking on it. I, it amazes me. For the amount of games that were made of Adam's family, how much money that game still commands? You would think, uh, I, mean, I guess it's just a demand thing, you know, because it's so loved by people, but there's so many of them out there. I mean, there's a ton of whirlwinds and fun houses and Twilight right. Zones, and, and yet you can get, you can get a, like a Star Trek Next Generation way cheaper than you can get a Twilight Zone. It's, it's, it's so weird. I, I don't know. I never could figure out the rhyme or reason to it. So since you have since you have the Lawler row, have you seen any of the dialed in yet? Um, I watched the um, podcast with um, the the uh, Buffalo guys. Bro, what is it? Why can't I remember the name? Bro, of it? do you even pinball? Yes, do you even pinball? Jeez, oh man, sorry guys. I do I do know your your stuff. I watched that one, and I've seen pictures and stuff like that. I mean, I was uh, I was somewhat excited about it because i do like his stuff you know i like pat's stuff um it looks interesting i mean i'm i'm warming up to it a little more as i hear about stuff and i see it 
Yeah, I, I know it's 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 tough a lot of times to tell from video, and it I really I, is. Yeah, yeah, I put some video out there. I mean, you can watch it and not really get a. You, you got to. I got to play the game because I was at Expo. Oh, did you put some video too? I'll look for yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, if you, I think, I think I put it on our channel, and it's also on my own channel. Again, it's the Slam, Slam Till Podcast. Just look for it on YouTube. But it's, and I also put it on my own channel, which I, is Gizmonic Mystery Science Theater reference there. Um, I, I think I subscribe to you, so yeah. I should. Uh, yeah, I should so, have it. In my, I just haven't been on YouTube in so long to see it. I'll say. I mean. As someone who has played a lot of Lawler games, it, it is if you when you play it, it is definitely Lawler. I mean, if you play it, it's like okay, this feels like a Lawler game. I mean, it it, it feels like a Lawler Williams game. That's the best way I can say. So, but is it worth eight nine thousand dollars? I mean, you know, that's where I get turned off because I can't I can't imagine spending. Um, I can't I just can't imagine spending that kind of money on something. I I, I just won't. I just, I'm just not gonna do it. So, uh, I, but I'm looking forward to playing it. I really am. Uh, I, uh, you know, it, it, you had mentioned earlier, if you start reading pin side and reading into it too much, you still, you have to be careful. You know, the stuff that you heard about the game when it first came out, I was reading it mostly on pin side because people were reporting it, you know, but a lot of the people that were talking about it were people like me that just looked at pictures. And it's like, um, I want to hear from the people who played it. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. How does it feel? Yeah. How does it play? Just when that came out, oh, my God. They, they they revealed that, and everyone just shit on it just badly. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. It's just like everyone hated the title except me. Uh, every, everyone hated, like, the, the idea, the theme. Everyone hated it. You can't make anyone happy. It's just like, we want an original theme. Okay, here's an original theme. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> what, what what is this? It's like uh, you wanted an original theme. Here you go. I want pinball to take me away from my cell phone. I don't want a game about a cell phone. No, oh, it's very good. It's okay, all... you know it's like everyone's so mad. I love the cell phone. <laughs> you get to shoot the cell phone. Come on. Why is yes, everybody so mad? We're in a, we're in the hobby here. We're you know I'll tell you what. Look in 1999 when Williams Bally closed and all that was left was Sega and now Stern. Um, I got to be honest with you. If we were going to have, if we were going to just keep having Harley Davidson or, 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 or striker extreme, and that was what we had to look forward to. I mean, I just, I don't, I thought pinball was gone in a couple of years. I, I, I never, and, and me and my friends, especially, I looked around, I said, that's it. I said, this is it. You know, I've been with it for the beginning. I've been collecting for a long time, and now pinball is going to be gone, and 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 that's I just don't see it happening. And then you know, all of a sudden, things just started cranking, and then uh, Stern started hiring a lot of these people that kind of tweaked the default a little bit and started coming up with stuff. And then all of a sudden, Lawler's doing Monopoly, mm. and then all of a sudden it's and so and it just it just started, you know. And so I am thankful that we have pinball at all in 2016. So I'm not going to sit here and get mad over anything. Um, okay. You know, we'll like, do that for you. We'll do that yeah. for you. Oh, so I don't know. That, I don't know. That you Chris, guys. Chris is just having this effect on me now. I, 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 I don't want to do any games. I hate now. I, I just have so much love. I just, <laughs> I can't, I, I can't criticize anything now. I just feel bad. I, I, you know what? I'm so pessimistic in my real life. This is the only time I'm happy. Ah. <laughs> well, speaking of pessimistic, uh Oh, I, I will bring up, we mentioned Batman before, and just to uh, respond to one of our um, listeners, listeners, yeah, I want to bring him up here, because we, we were uh, mentioning how it, the last week they had IAPA, which is a big industry show for operators, like you know, the, the industry side of, of gaming, and Stern was there, and they did not have Batman. And we no were Batman. just like, yeah, no Batman. Why is there no Batman? So we were like, why is there no Batman? And um, got a message from uh, Gary Wood. An easy name to say, Gary Wood. Gary Wood! Gary Wood, Gary Wood. Gary Wood. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a new amusement park. Gary Wood, who said that uh, Gary Stern, who was speaking at the uh, – at uh, the, he actually – this was at his Free Play Florida talk. 
These, there was no Batman there because the IAPA was an operator show, and Batman 66 wouldn't be there since it was aimed. It wasn't aimed at operators. Oh. So that was the explanation. The only the, here's my only issue with that, and not to be pes- too pessimistic here. Number one, in in their in their booth at IAPA, what was one of the banners they had up? Batman 66. Oh, okay. And they had some games there. They had, they had two Metallicas. They had a Metallica Pro, and a Metallica Premium. What, Bruce, what are premiums aimed at? What what segment of the community are they aimed at? Mostly homeowners. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Well, forget that. They they had two Ghostbusters there. They had a Pro, and they had a Premium. Just saying. I agree. I'm just um, saying. I, I know he's saying. I know. Okay. You guys are so angry. <laughs> oh, it, we, we can't be. Trust me on this. I just get her out of here. Oh, angry! You should see me playing Ghostbusters sometimes. You want to see angry? Oh, oh I'm with you. Oh, oh, if I hear who brought the dog one more time, I swear. Okay, I'm he explode. brought the dog. Oh, it'll just just oh, that that's, nice doggy. No, oh, your little pooch. Oh. Yes, yeah. you know what I did? I climbed down a ledge. And tried to disconnect the cable, but it couldn't. So you know what I did? I turned on my TV real loud, too. That way everybody would think both our TVs had something wrong with them. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I did? Yes. <laughs> that, that's why I invite all my uh, my clients, you know, because I could use it as a tax write-off or whatever the hell. Yeah. Yeah. That's, why that's why I invite clients instead of friends. You having a good time, Mark? And you know who was originally <laughs> supposed to have that role? John Candy. John Candy. Yeah. He's just already wow. believed, yes. He wanted to do it with like a German accent yep. or something. You yep. remember that? Yeah. <laughs> they were like, uh. But he had he had some other commitment, but then at least he got to be in the Ghostbusters music video. So there you go. Oh, yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. No <laughs> Along way. with everyone else. Everyone was in the Ghostbusters music video. <laughs> Who are you going to call? I mean, every, even Ernie Hudson got to be in there. Yep. Even though, like, in some, in some of the posters, he gets cut off, and they just show the three of them. It was nice to see that actually all four of them are in the game, that they remember there was a fourth Ghostbuster. You're up, rookie. Yeah, yes, you're up, yes. Rookie. I love when it says that after you've been hitting 10 targets, and he still says, you're up, rookie. Yeah. Yo, you noticed that. Yes, yes. That's yeah, a little, little bug, a little bug. Yeah, you'll be well into a ball, and you'll just hear, like, you're up, rookie. Like, uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ernie. Yeah, okay, Ernie. <laughs> The funny thing is, I played Congo at someone's house for the like for the first time ever, where I could actually hear the sound, because I'd only ever played it at shows and tournaments where I never could hear anything. Right. And when it comes on, I hear Ernie Hudson. Like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. that's Ernie Hudson. He's in yeah. this game too. <laughs> yep. Yes, yes, he is. So him and John Trudeau must have some kind of thing because oh, he's in John Trudeau games. I like Congo. I like, I like Congo. Fun game. It is a fun game. It's an excellent game. So we're gonna bleed right into our. Uh... Yeah, we'll go. We'll go into our our, our regular segments I'm, unless Chris is any anything else. Oh God, I'm so. Let's he's not talk so about good. me anymore. Oh, he's so. <laughs> I'm so sick of talking about myself. Yes, please. You can find me at the All in Act stage in a play called Fools till Sunday. Yes. Yes. Uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, game you like, game you hate. Hmm. Oh, crap. I had to think. Oh, oh crap. Uh, you haven't I, done shit, have you? Well, you know, okay. I Last week, did you give one last week? Of course I did. Ah, oh, damn it. We started doing this, and I told Bruce, like, we're going to start repeating them. And Bruce is like, no, I remember them all. I do. It's like, you, you remember them all? Like, we're in a show, what, 20? You remembered every one I said. Yep. Now, wait, now let me just clarify, because you told me this right before you hit record. Um, it can't be a game we own. Yes. Can it be, can it be but, one we owned? Yes, it can be one you own, and actually, okay, and you can actually have it in your you can have it in your basement and still hate it, which I've done already. Well, you're okay. weird like that. Yeah, I, I try to try to get rid of games I don't like. Oh, it's because your your dad had like Avatar or something. <laughs> or Party Zone and Avatar. Oh, or Avatar as we would uh. We Avatar. Like Avatar. I actually like playing that just to practice. It was good for tournament practice because you just go for like multi ball and that's it, you know. So, uh, you go first. I need to think of something. Okay, game I like. We're going old school Bally again. Little little power play. Ah. 
Bobby Orr's power play for his, his one year with the Blackhawks. And a uh, great game, four flippers, two sets of drop targets, up kick in the out kick and out hole in the middle. Multipliers increase with the each four drop targets you take down on either the left or the right hand side. Uh, star rollovers around each loop. Fun game. In the middle, we've talked about this on, you know, bring things that haven't been used in a while. Is the center post between the two uh, flippers pop up and down? Great artwork. Like, I think that's Christensen, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think it is. All together, a great package. Great game. Now we go from great artwork to a terrible artwork package. We're going to Gottlieb. My pick on Gottlieb. Good. Man, you pick on more. Gottlieb's a lot, dude. Oh, you'll agree with me on this one. you got one. a lot of hate in your heart, man. You'll agree with this one. Raven. Oh, that's like my favorite game ever. My freaking God. You're on crack, son. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I, I like I like Genesis. Ra- Ra- Raven, Raven, eh, whatever. Yeah, Raven's just a one-shot pony. It, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Road Kings worse. I, I actually like Road Kings. So. I don't like Road Kings, either, but we'll get into that next time. So those you are my what, two games. You know what's funny about Raven? There's, <laughs> I have to tell you this real quick. There's a guy. He's a really nice guy. hope he's listening. His name is Matt. He's a cool he cool guy. goes to the uh, White Rose Game Room show, the York show, all the time. And one year, I swear to God, every time my friend Michelle and I would turn the corner, he'd be playing Raven. And we have no idea why. He just kept playing Raven over and over and over and over. And so we, by the end of the convention, we started making fun of him. Ooh, you know, ooh, Matt, you playing more Raven? Ooh, you know. So the next year, I printed out the flyer for Raven, and I Photoshopped it, and I put it on glossy paper, and we signed it uh, to Matt, love Raven, and put a little little lipstick kiss right in the middle of it, and we framed it for him. That's freaking hilarious. I think I think he was I think I don't know if he was cre- happy or creeped out, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my, he'll never live that down. How about you go next, Chris? Because then I can go and and I actually can segue into something else with with my picks. Okay. okay. Um. Well, yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have a hard time with the one that I hate because I'm I'm really thinking hard right now. But you know, one that I love, um, that. I'm surprised I have not purchased a second time is um, Demolition Man. There is something about that game whenever I see it and it's playing well, when it's playing solid, when the flippers are rebuilt and that game is level and it's playing, there is a flow to that game that I cannot get enough of. I love, I love it. The, 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 you know, you shoot the ball up to the upper left flipper into the computer that comes up to your right flipper up around to activate the claw up to the claw. There's just, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of flow on that game. And I just, I get addicted to that game when I play it. I always end up with my, that's one where you'll probably find my initials on it. Cause I will keep playing it and keep playing it and keep playing it. And, um, I don't know. That's one that I've always, always really, really liked. And that's another one that uh, I've noticed go up in price a bit, but it's still not quite like you said, Ron. Yeah, it's not a Twilight Zone level or one of those. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. if if you want to play one, man, come on over. Sitting in the basement. Oh, yeah. So I I love that game. And I just, I always wanted to pick another one. Um, I'm having a tough time. You know, there was one game that I was kind of disappointed in. And that was, it's a recent game because I like the theme a lot. And that was um, Avengers. Um, I can agree with that one. I played that. I it was one where I tr- I uh, I guess maybe that's more disappointment than anger or hatred. But I really wanted to like that game. Um, and every time I would play it, I just it just didn't grab me at all. I tried. And in fact, uh, Bruce, you had one, right? No, no, never had one. No. Never had no, one. I but I, I actually happened. don't mind it. He had X Men. Uh, I think that's why you're. Had oh, that's it, X Men. Yeah. Um, I can't remember where I played it. Oh, oh, that's it. Pocketeer had it. Yes, Pocketeer had one a premium. Yeah, and that was when I was excited because I thought, all right, this one maybe will be set up really well, and I'll get a chance to play. And I played it there a lot when I was at that tournament that one time. I just, I couldn't. Get, I don't know what it is about. It was something about it. I just couldn't get into it. I didn't like the, the the, the skinny little shots, and there was just something mm-hmm. about the the the. So I guess comparatively speaking, the flow on that game I didn't like. No, like Hulk. <sighs> Very good. I'll, okay, I'll get into mine, which will lead to a, a 
another segue. And it's funny you mentioned Demo Man, because that also could be another segue. It's just full of segues here. Uh, I'll do the game I dislike first. And you actually, I, I'm going to rip you off, Bruce, because you've already mentioned this one. But I got to play it this weekend and kind of solidified that I'm just not a huge fan. Cue Ball Wizard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rowdy Ramp Ramp. Rowdy Ramp Ramp. And then we, <laughs> we were saying that the whole time. The whole time. Everyone was just repeating that. It was hilarious. Rowdy Ramp Ramp. We need a Rowdy <laughs> Ramp Ramp. Oh, good Lord. Just trying to do... Uh, because I, I, I never really played it that much before before I realized, like, okay, you know, how do you start multi-ball? Okay, now, how do you get jackpots? Oh, you're supposed to hit the cue ball to hit the target to make the other thing hit, but, like, it's almost impossible to hit that thing centered to, to get it to... Oh, that was such a pain. That just, yeah, I, I used to play that a lot when I was younger. They had that next to uh, Whirlwind. Um, no, I'm sorry, Whitewater. It was at, it was at a, a bar around here when I was a kid. <laughs> a bar. It's funny that I would say that. But it, uh, and I just yeah, it was the same thing. It was just really strange. It's a very strange game. Very strange. Oh, yeah. Yes, it, you know, it's the the, the Gottlieb where modes are useless. It's all I I yeah, I never even got into the multi ball too much. But I almost guarantee you, if I got like all the jackpots, whatever the super was, was probably the the biggest total like points thing in the game. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. guessing. I don't even know. So that was dislike. Uh, like, and I'll bring this up. Bruce will like this one. Strikes and Spares. Oh, good boy. Mm. Yes. Very good. Game. Yes. I got to play it a lot this week, past weekend at the Catskill Classic. Ooh. Segway. I played in the Catskill Classic this week. We, we mentioned that on the last podcast. And I, I did fairly good. Yes, you did. As, as I was the, uh, I was victorious. You did. He brought glory. To the podcast. You got worried, and I got upstate points. I got to hold the Indonesian uh, pin pin of doom. Yes, Very proud did. of that. Oh, Ron, yes. Ron Hallett is victorious. Victorious. I have the power. He man. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Children of the 80s cartoons. The strikes and spares I played well, and also high speed treated me very well. Nice. Basically, they, they did the format was, and it's so weird when you have an, like a laid back format. It was just so refreshing. It's so much more relaxing than the usual. Like you just keep buying entries and playing over and over like I was in the previous week. This was like you, you pay 20 bucks if you're ranked in a certain like top whatever. And they're only 10 bucks if you're like lower ranked in the IFPA. And you play 10 games. And you just try to get the best score you can on each game, and you can play as many times as you want. 20 bucks. It's like, cool. Like, like, you don't have to keep putting money in over and over. You just keep playing. So I think I qualified. I, I had to win a playoff to get in. And then in the semifinals. Playoffs. Yeah, playoffs. Then in the semifinals, they did it. It was like... They had a semifinals with four people, and then the, the, the first qual The first... The person who qualified first got a buy. So in the in the foursome in the semifinals, just the low person would be eliminated. So I was I was it was um try to remember. It was me, Ed Zeltman, Mike Pantino, and uh the host himself, Howard Levine, were in the semifinals. And it ended up me and Ed me and Ed advanced, but Howard and Mike end up tied. So they had to have a one-game playoff, which they had, and Mike won. So it ended up being um, the, the finals. And, wow, we might have to edit this one here because I should have the guy's name ready to go, and I don't. And it's fail. Quite, quite quite fail. Embarrassing. Yes, this, it's very, <laughs> very bad. That's pretty damn bad. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yes, this is, this is the power of editing, as I will just keep talking because I'm going to edit this out. No one's going to hear this. It's going to be. We've great. been talking. We've been talking. We've been talking about Iran a little too much for my taste. So. But yes. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Oh, I'm, I'm looking up Catskill Classic, and it's coming up at the Catskill Police Department. Oh, hold on. Catskill. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, That's where you spent that. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, this is such a fail. I just because I, I I hate when I don't know someone's name, and they posted the points like almost immediately. They did. Like insane. Yeah, yeah. 
insanely quick. Okay. Yeah, it was who I thought. Okay. All right, little silence. Editing ends now. So I ended up in the uh, the finals. It was Jeremy, who was the top qualifier. And then Jeremy Ed. Who? Uh, Jeremy. Ed Zeltman. Jeremy who? Oh, you're killing me. Now I'm going to have to edit again. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. Oh, man. No, you're leaving this fucking in. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I have to leave this in. You do. Oh. Worst podcast ever. Well, I knew it. Oh, my classic. I love this. Funny. I knew it was, I, I was pretty sure his name was, it was Jeremy. I actually didn't know his last name. And now I'm looking at, I'm not sure how to say it. So I'm probably going to butcher it. And if he listens to the podcast, I'm so sorry, dude. It's H A K E S. Hakes. Okay. So it was, it was Jeremy Hakes, Mike Fantino, Ed Zeltman, Ed Z, and me in the final four. And we played, it was, it was like uh, it was like Papa Finals, but with Pinberg scoring. So you play three games, and it's three, two, one, zero, scoring, and the high C gets to pick game or order. So the first, the first game, uh, I believe, it was Grand Prix. I, I took second on that, and then it was uh, the next game was High Speed, which I took a first, and then the uh, the Strikes and Spares I blew up. I had like like almost 500k the next person right. had like 40 or 50k i don't think anyone else had over 100k so that very that nice. was that was most awesome that was a very very enjoyable that just very relaxing format i was rooting for you i saw you when i was in league night it's just it's just after being in in like florida where and you're putting money in and, and you're paying, playing all these entries just to kind of play and just it's all fun it was it was Nice, and he had he had uh, also he had a fifty fifty drawing. He had a, a play countdown for charity. You know, pot part of the pot goes to charity. I love countdown. That's definitely one of my, uh, I would say, games to like. But it's a, it's a great game for that kind of thing where you're just trying to get the high score, and it's just so brutal. So a, a splendid time was had by all. Yes, it was. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. And I'd like to also send congratulations out to one of our other guests, our frequent guests, who won a demo man, Mr. Tim Sexton, who won a huge trophy and a demo man. So that was so apropos that Chris mentioned that. Wow. And he sold it. Oh, he sold it already? Sold it right then and there. Oh, okay. At the uh, Flippers tournament oh, really? in North Carolina. Yeah. I think isn't well, at the name of the... A... Yes, and he won a Papa Circuit event. Yes. Big money, big prizes. He won a brand new VCR. It was great. Yes, it was great. But congratulations, Tim Balls. Mr. Tim Saxton won one big. Actually, hey. so did another friend of the show, uh, Levy. And Steve Bowden was down there. Hi, Steve. I'm a bonus. Yeah, Steve uh, ended up, in, I guess, inadvertently or, or, or airing the finals because they, they, str- they were streaming it, but their internet died. And they, they actually had, I think they had, had the internet provider or probably Time Warner, whoever it was out there, and they couldn't get it fixed, at least in time. So uh, Steve ended up just filming it on his cell phone, and then he posted yep. it to <laughs> Facebook later. Oh, Steve. Oh, yeah, Steve. Steve. Steve's awesome. He, he, was a, a, he was a good friend when I lived in New York City because he was yes. part of the, a lot of the tournaments, a lot of the stuff out there, and he, was, he became a really, really good, good friend out there. And uh, we used to always joke because we'd play the Indiana Jones four game, you know, Stern. He would always say, all you got to do is map, 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 map. Yep. And I would, so every time I would see him, I go map, 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 map. And he go map, map, map. <laughs> Indy. So. Indy, the game sucked, Indy. It did. That could have been on the other, on the list, huh? Yo, yes. It has been on mine. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, it might have been on mine, too. See, what, yeah. That was, was thinking, another disappointment for me. Yeah, when I was thinking of the Angry Video Game, that, that was one of the games I was always thinking would be easy to, yeah. to, you know. I hit a shot, and I get to watch a movie. That's yes. just what I want to do when I'm playing pinball. What were they yes. thinking? You know, so. <laughs> just something along those lines. So, yeah, actually, wait a minute. You, you met him once, right, the Angry Video Game nerd? Did you yes, meet him I at did. some point? Because yeah. I could have swore I saw a picture of him and you. That's yeah. where I'm thinking of this. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was at uh, dig- Digital Press in New Jersey. Yeah, he was doing like, yeah, an, uh, dumb, yeah. It was like on your Facebook feed or something. It's like, oh, yeah. Chris Bush. Yeah, he was cool. He was very nice, James. 
the pinheads will be like, what are they talking about? Uh, just yeah, look, probably. Yeah, look, look it up though. It's funny. It's called the Angry Video Game Nerd. You just just imagine us doing pinball games with that because there are a lot of them you could probably do that with. <laughs> <laughs> so are we? Uh, let's see. Do we, I'm changing. Repairs. See repairs. Oh well. Uh, I I got the big game up on its legs. Hey, and <laughs> I guess you get what you pay for. I went to, uh, you know, take the, um, to, to, uh, I want to take the glass off, the playfield glass, and I reached in for the lockdown bar latch, and it was kind of hanging there by the spring. That's what my, that's what the one at my house is doing right now. Uh, so the, um, uh, like, oh shit, how am I going to get the lockdown bar off? Well, I just tried to use logic, and I wonder if I just pull up on it hard enough. And sure enough, came right off because there is no latching mechanism. It's like not there anymore. Like it must have busted off, so they just removed it. Oh, cute. Yeah, cute. And you know what the chances are of ever getting one of those? Zero. Nah, you'll find them. W- where am I going to find that, Bruce? You'll find it. We'll find it for you. No, we'll find it. We'll find some other wide-body stern game that's being parted. Clearly, that'll be easy. Well, we ask our listeners. Well, ironically, we have a call. Go ahead, listener. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I have a big game. I'll give you it for $10,000. All right. Sold. Yeah, sold. We'll figure it out. We, if anyone has a lockdown bar for a wide body start. No, not a lockdown bar. The bar is fine. The, the actual lockdown mechanism itself, there's that. Then there's the fact that like the main fuse under the playfield is blown. However, none of the coils look toasty, so I don't know what exactly is causing that. One of the slingshots is totally wasted, like it's sheared right off of the uh, plunger. Excellent. Yeah, I do have I do have a spare, so I can do that. The flippers, the they're just what I thought I would see, which is the, the the holes are blown out, so they like put huge screws in there, and and it's a total mess. That's fine because you can get all that stuff, so that doesn't really worry me. The thing that worried me when I as soon as I saw, because I knew something wasn't right. If if anyone's ever seen a big game, it has four flippers, and it has it, it's made in a way it, you can't get flipper bitched. Like if you lift the two flippers up, it doesn't go in between and drain. Um, because it has a like a um, a guide that's secondary there, guides. a secondary guide. Well, guess what's not on mine? The secondary guides on either side. Oh my! Yes, the screws are there. That's the first thing I noticed. You see screws going into the playfield, and they're they're there. There's two on each side. And I'm there, I'm looking at it, it's like, uh, if a ball went in there, it would kind of just go right through. That's not right. There's got to be something there that's missing. It's the new Paragon. Uh, so I, um, thanks to Pinside, yes, props to Pinside. If, if you look up Big Game, they have shop out pitch, picks on there. Shop out pictures. Because you need, you need the shop out pictures to be able to see it. Because in, Are they in, when it's assembled, you can't see it. What was Are that? They nudies? Yeah, nudies. Are they nudies? Nudies. Okay. Nude game, yeah. So, um, right. Uh, all right. It's a nude game, Peter. That's the only kind of game I play. So you got the um, <laughs> the guides are are on there, and and they're exactly what I thought they would look like. They're just like right angle, like metal piece. It looks like a guide, just like just like a steel steel guide. So, um, if you happen to have any, Bruce, or if they're on one that you've seen that maybe we can get fabricated a couple of them i would i would hope it's the same part on both sides and they didn't you know use a different one oh i guarantee they did they look the same and it's stern so even then they were cheap so they pro- sorry so they probably used the same one i'm i i would think there'd be no neat reason to use different ones if you didn't have to so i'm thinking it's the same so uh, other than that it's fine the problem is that's kind of a major uh, play thing that's got to be there in order to play the game. So, Did you talk to Mr. Scott? Uh, I have not, but uh, I believe Scott is a listener. So, Scott, if you're listening, you can, uh, of course, he's, he might have fallen asleep by now. So who knows? I think he has, but yeah, that's, that's good. That's a, that's a common joke, Chris, on our podcast that everyone's falling asleep. 
because, you know, we try to keep it to an hour. Actually, I think Chris is falling asleep. I think he is, too. Yeah, he is. Well, I'm huh? get... well, no? There well, he is. There he is. Yes. I'm here. Okay, so uh, for repairs for me, uh, I figured out uh, what's going on with me and Zach. Zach, we had to mention Zach. Figured out what's going on with his vector. This is a first for me ever. Wait a minute, vector. Uh, I thought it was Kevin's vector. It is Kevin's vector. Jesus. Mine, so. Okay, you can't say his, his last name right. Now you totally don't even say the right guy. What's, what do you have against Kevin? I nothing. need to know. No, nothing. Yeah, if you didn't hear last week, Chris, um, I, I, was telling, I was telling Bruce the problem with Vector was that it was Vector. Yes. Yeah, I heard you say that. <laughs> yeah, he had an all-tech board, and it, and it won't boot because it knows it's in a Vector. Right, that's why it refuses to work. But, you know, like in the t- Roadrunner cartoons, you know, when he tries to use stuff on the Roadrunner, and it says, like, right in the bottle, does not work on Roadrunners, that's what it actually says on the all-tech board, does not work in Vector. Well, it does actually, though. I hate to say. Oh. We figured, guess what? Guess what actually caused it not to boot to the seven flash? Uh, something stupid. Yes, a bad light board. A bad light board bad light causes board. it not to boot? Huh? Yep. What light board? The light, the light driver board. Oh, the lamp board. Lamp board, yeah. Okay, when you say the light board, I'm thinking of the newer games. Okay, they have lamp boards underneath. Nope, okay. Nope. nope, the whole lamp driver board. It was drawing down the five volts below four point nine one. Put first we disconnect the lamp the lamp board, boot right up, put another one in, boot right up, put his back in. Must be one of the chips is bad or something, there's a short in there. Brings it down below four point nine one volts, will not boot. So now, he's getting a new light board. I get this thing out of my house. A win-win. Yeah, yes. Win-win. God, I hate Vector. I hate that game. Uh, I think Friday, <laughs> I might be off. I might not be off, but I'm going to replace the uh, power board for the Harlem, and then I'm going to work on Simpsons with my my uh, upkick problem, and then hopefully I'll get most of my bugs done. And I have to wrap up now. Uh, eight ball, and I'm yawning now. We're at 145, so yeah, I'm a little late on my yawns, but uh, and... so you got to fix the Simpsons. Yes, and uh, see which, see which uh, we fixed. It had a cold solder joint on the board, but I lost my sounds on all my soundboard. So now I got to work on that. Hey, you're kidding. So moral of the story: don't run tournaments because all your games will die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. For our listeners, we're coming near the end here. Um, Mr. Bucci in the day used to have some killer parties. Is 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 he did. any of those in the future? Any any anything going on in that? Because uh... I only I only got to go to one. You know I, I you know I, um, maybe there's a there's a party in his pants. Everyone's coming. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. I thought a pause there would be uh, the best uh, answer. There. Yes. <laughs> I uh <laughs> so much editing is gonna happen here. I'm, I'm oh hitting. fuck no. <laughs> you, you can, trust you me, can I'm, swear I'm, on this too. You can swear trust on this me, one. I'm on your I'm on your podcast. You already lost all your listeners before you <laughs> Yes, excellent. Um But uh you know what? That's something I would like to do. Uh, a lot of the games are they're not they're not party ready. <laughs> Um, as you well know, you know, oh once you have, once you, once you have one party, uh, you know, after 12, 12 hours of them being played, you know, generally some stuff needs tweaked or something. And I just never have gotten the rest of them, uh, up to that point. But, you know, I'd really like to, it's, it, those are fun. I, I miss those. I used to have them multiple times a year for, for a decade or more. I mean, it was really a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, I'd like to. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> I hope so. All right, like we'll, we'll see is better than never. Never. Yeah, fuck, this, no. fuck these people. No. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the cursing has gotten worse as we've gone oh, along. Fuck yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, see, there it oh, is. Oh, wow, wow. Come on, show some. have some class, man. What's the matter with you? Come on. Give me a call sometime when you've got no class. Yeah, yeah. All right. very, oh, very good. Very good. Rodney Dangerfield. It was Dangerfield. his birthday today, I believe. For, oh, uh, man. Why? Yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't do running danger field. Yeah, I, I, I used to be able to really well when I was younger, but now it's it's gone. <laughs> yeah, 
You know, my father got fired from a bank. He got steel for – yeah, I fucked that up. See? See, now you I did. just said it. Yes, yes. Got but, steel. But, yeah, yeah. My, my father used to work at a bank. He got fired for stealing pens. See, I was just like <laughs> it's just – God, I love Ronnie G. Fred. If, if any of you out there yeah, – I, I, you may want to go back. They used to have these things called comedy albums back in the day. And, and, and like all your comedians would have their comedy albums. There's the, the Ronnie Dangerfield No Respect comedy album, probably from like the early 80s. It's very, very funny. Very funny. It got all the you know, material you're familiar with. There's even a heckler in there that gets I, – I, I, I love watching comedians just destroy hecklers. Yeah. I, I think his was like the guy was heckling him, and he's there like, hey, buddy, save your breath. You're going to need it to blow up your inflatable date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, somebody, somebody screamed out, what do you do for a living? He goes, I got guys for your sister, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I met, I met, you know, what's, what's pretty cool. I have his, uh, I have his autograph um, on, um, on uh, a laser disc uh, that I have. Um, I met him in New York City because he has a comedy club out there that he started Dangerfields. Um, and uh, when I first visited New York for the very first time, um, sometime in like 99-ish or something, he, um, I went there because I just always wanted to go to this, to this danger field. Cause I was always such a fan and he, he was there. He happened to be in New York city at the time, um, which was rare. Cause you know, he's living in California at that point. And he, uh, he happened to be there and I, I didn't care what I had to do. I had to meet him, you know? So I just busted through and I, I just asked him if he could sign. I brought, I brought it with me just in case. Cause you never know, you know, I happen to have a ladybugs laser disc. Um, with the Roddy Dangerfield on the front, I had him sign it, and you know I met him real quick. He was real nice, but I will cherish that forever. It's one of it's one of my favorite things that I ever got to do. <laughs> Caddyshack pinball, make it happen! Come on! Yes. Oh my Come god! On, yeah, I know. Come on, you can do it. I bet with this pinball, cool. you get a free bowl of soup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Yikes. Wang, I think this place is restricted. Don't tell him you're Jewish, okay? <laughs> Something like that. I can't remember. Yes, that. yes, that, that's, yes. There's, there's, there's so many of them. Yes. Yes. God. Uh, okay, Bruce. Are, are you ready to pay some bills? Or, 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 uh, or, yes, or, or are we doing upcoming shows? I don't really have much uh, on the upcoming shows. I'm just going to plug my website of www.pinballlifter.com. Chris can now make fun of it. Go ahead, Chris. So he got these shirts made uh, <laughs> and, and he goes to the, he goes to a convention and my, my friend and Michelle and I who go pretty much every year to this convention, we're, we're looking at his shirt and it says pinballlifter.com. And there's just one too many L's P I N B A L L L L I F T E R. And apparently nobody noticed it, including Bruce. <laughs> yep. Fail. Fail. He was so mad at us. Remember how mad you got? You were no, mad at us. Like, what the fuck? I just bought these shirts. What the fuck? <laughs> but it was like it was like you were pissed at us. You wouldn't talk with us for a while. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I don't give a shit about that. I was pissed off about the shirts. I was like, what the fuck? I just put like hundred dollars in these shirts and there I am, like And the skull says, Spell better. Spell better. <laughs> See? But a very a very good product. Yes, we try. We try. Uh, uh, I really didn't do any show prep for for uh, the new shows. The only thing I know coming up is uh, Central New York Pinball is the final league night coming up this Friday. Anyone's welcome. If you go to uh, Facebook and look up Central New York Pinball, uh, you can check out all the information. Uh, the selfie leagues are still going on this month. Uh, for Rochester, it is a Knox Amusements Pinball Location League. Uh, for Syracuse, it is... Uh, Syracuse Pinball Location League, and for Buffalo Pinball is Buffalo Pinball Selfie League. All three are going around right now. Uh, I don't even know when the next uh, Papa Circuit event is or anything like that. So we're I'm a little out of touch with this, but next week we will definitely be more on the ball. This was more a Chris Bucci extravaganza. So we'll we'll be much more on the ball when we're not having a guest. Uh, we'll be a lot more prepared. Yeah, that that sounds great. It's the truth, though. Right, I'm fully prepared, right? Because I, I knew, I knew, I knew everyone's name from the tournament. I didn't have to look yeah, anything up. You had your games all set up and ready to go for your games you like, games you hate. Yeah, I yeah, I had yeah. everything all set up. Yes, uh, there is one thing. Um, do you know when the vote will be occurring for where the Upstate tournament will be? Because Mr. Howard, 
when I was there was uh, inquiring uh, if but, I knew anything yeah. about when that yeah, was going to happen. Yeah, it will be hopefully this week. I don't, I've just been so busy with work. It will be coming up, and it will be uh, – first we'll be asking the regional guys where they want to get the top three, and then we'll all vote on it. So that will be the fun part. Yeah, when I was at Howard's, I realized how long I have to go to really get the uh, the, the ambiance I'm looking for in the game room. Because Howard's is all like bowling themed, and just there's there's no part of the wall. There's no area where there's not something, either like you know posters or flyers or all kinds of things. And he he has his chairs are the actual chairs like from a bowling alley, which is so damn cool. And the jukebox and the speakers and all that. And I just don't. Ronnie doesn't have any of that. He's just got a basement full of games, unfortunately. I'm trying to get the posters up there. So Yes, I saw. I saw. There's notice. Trying the best I can. So I agree. Ugh. Oh, man. Ugh. Come on. Come Get on. Hey, take it easy, will you? Take it easy, Get will you? Show some class. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I want to thank Chris for coming on again. You are always welcome on here, Mr. Bucci. So if you ever want to join us again, just email me or message. I know the Thanks. fans will probably comment. Definitely. We, we are they're very friendly when we have guests on so and if you are in the uh, erie pennsylvania area please attend the um fools 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 Go. yes all in act all in act.net there's two more shows actually the saturday sh- it's a cute little fairy tale comedy written by neil simon and uh the the saturday show is actually a benefit show that they do every year mm-hmm. uh to raise money for uh kids charity uh, which is the the local shelter? It's for for children's Christmas presents, coats, um, and it's it's a big fundraiser that they do. A hundred percent of the ticket sales goes to that, so it's a really nice thing. It's a it's a great thing. We usually end up getting close to. We usually sell out those shows or get close to selling out those shows, and that's a nice thing because it, you know, it's good for the community too. On top of it, but uh, uh, I have to tell you, I this has been a blast. Uh, thanks for having me on here. I hope <laughs> I hope uh, you know I hope welcome. I can do this again because you guys are i mean you know plus we're friends it's easy to yes. talk to friends but also it's been uh nice sharing some stories and i hope uh your listeners you know don't uh don't unsubscribe uh, <laughs> hot subscribe <laughs> yes yes please check out chris's uh youtube video channel it's uh S P I D A one a Right. And I'll have the Ghostbusters video up in the next day or two. And then hopefully that John Trudeau interview, which is it's pretty interesting. You know, he's if you're if you ever met John, talk to him. He's he's pretty he's pretty down to earth. He's and, down to uh, earth, but he's very energetic about his stuff. He is. You, he very... loves what he does. And he, he gives you he gave me some really good insight on some things that were pulled from the game. Some some, you know, things. That, it's interesting. I like that stuff. So what can I say? And the thing I'll say about John, I like I like Borg and, and Richie, who kind of. I, I would say always stay in a certain comfort zone. John will try anything. Yeah. And if you've seen some of his games from the past, he will literally try anything. Then his layouts are never, I, I think I joked with him that you don't really have a trademark. You just sort of do what you want to do when you try new things. And he goes, well, that's kind of my trademark. And I go, ah, yeah. yes, being different is yep. a trademark. Yep. And he's had, <laughs> he's had so many white woods that he has pictures of, of games that just never even happened. And it's just like, oh, yeah, it's just, oh, yeah. some, just something I worked on, and we never really did anything with that. Because at one point, he was like Gottlieb's only designer. Right. In the, yeah, in the mid-80s was. there, he was basically the man. So yep. mm-hmm. you got to design a ton of games. So, yes, Chris, thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much. We built it up. It was like a, a great. It was like a great play or a great movie. We we <laughs> we built it up, and, and then we had the big climax. And now it's <laughs> now it's the and now it's the epilogue. So <laughs> <laughs> the closing credits are coming through now. So yes. thanks everyone. This is the Slam Till Podcast. You can catch us on Facebook. Just search for Slam Till Podcast. We are on YouTube again. Just search for Slam Till Podcast. Any comments can be sent to Slam Till Podcast at gmail dot com. Again, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Uh, don't forget, episode 20, this was uh, this Star was Trek. Into Darkness Con. Con. Goodbye, Bruce. Goodbye, Mr. Kevin Manny. <laughs> <laughs>